Hello, everyone. Welcome to Victory Lap, the GDQ Hotfix show that showcases new world record and personal bets runs and the runners who made them happen. I'm your host, Nuclear, and tonight I've got with me Duck to showcase his new personal best run of Banjo-Kazooie 100%. I'm super stoked about this one. Uh, but before we get started into that, I do have a few announcements. Uh, Frame Fatales will be having its next all-women's speedrunning event, Flame Fatales from August 21st to 27th. The marathon schedule is now out. Type command FF in Twitch chat or go to gamesnotquick.com slash frame fatales for more information. Prize submissions are open now until Sunday the 14th. Check out the site for more information. Also, remember your subs, Prime Gaming subs, Gift subs, and Bits Cheered on GDQ Twitch channel help support weekly hotfix content. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy these weekly hotfix shows. All right, Duck, I you have been playing this game for quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> how long have you been speedrunning Banjo-Kazooie for? Oh, wow. Yeah, coming up on 10 years there. Uh, so this... Uh, I know you've been grinding 100% uh, for a while, and this actually is a personal best that you got just a couple days ago. <laughs> yes, yeah, so are you still looking to still continue to improve this time that you've got, or? Mm hmm. Oh, hold on, we're fixing Duck's audio here real quick. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Is that okay? Uh, Am I muted? Or the chat's just trolling. You know how they are. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay, right. cool. Uh, so you've been speedrunning Banjo so we 10 years. years. Uh, yeah. This PB you just got August 7th. Um, that's what chat missed there, and uh, <laughs> all good. <laughs> so four days ago, I got this PB, and then you asked if I was going to keep going, if I wanted to grind yes. it down even lower. Um, I'm thinking that uh, that I've I'm pretty happy with the time I got at the moment. I know I'm going to come mm -hmm. back eventually because I can never get away from Banjo Kazooie 100. percent But uh, right now, I might put it on the on the back burner and start grinding some Banjo Tooie 100. percent The sequel Ooh. to this game. I used to speed yeah. run that a lot, and uh, I want to get back into it. Awesome, awesome. 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 All, right, All right, I'll, I'll let, let you go ahead and introduce your run, and, and let's, let's get into it. Great. Uh, one thing I'm just wondering is if my mic audio wasn't working. I'm wondering if my desktop audio will be working, uh, but we shall see, I guess. Yeah, yeah we'll, 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 we'll let, let you know, know if there's, there's a, an issue. Hopefully sure. we're all good, though. No more right. tech issues. <laughs> All right, well... Great, thank you. Anyways, what's up, chat? How's it going? How's everyone doing tonight? I hope you're all having fun, enjoying the Games Done Quick stream. Thanks to Games Done Quick for having me again. I was just at a Summer Games Done Quick. I speed ran Banjo Tooie Any Percent there, and I also speed ran uh, Mario Party, so that was a really good time. But I came home and I thought to myself, I gotta grind Banjo Kazooie. So I uh, I came home and got to work and pretty quickly was able to bring down the time. I was actually really excited because Nuclear actually um, invited me to the show after I got a PB like a week and a half ago, and it was absolutely like it was like a tiny PB, like a few seconds, and I was like, okay, well, it'll be fun to be on the show and talk about my PB. And then, oh yeah, the echo was probably because I'm not wearing headphones. Sorry about that. Should be fine now. Um, so, I could put on headphones, actually. That's probably a good idea. Let's just do that. Make it easier. What happened was Nuclear invited me to the show. She said, it's called Victory Lap. You're going to talk about your PB. You're going to go over it in detail. You can even draw on the screen. It's really cool. And then, after I agreed to be on the show, I PB'd again four days ago. And, um, you know, no spoilers, but this PB was much better. And I'm going to be way more excited to talk about this one. So, hope you're excited. Get some hype in the chat. And let me know. Let's just, uh, I guess we'll just get going. 
I'll tell you a little bit as we get started here. Let me know if the sound's not working. I can't really hear it, but. I would've got a very low 202. All right. But I got a picture question, so we have to try again. This is the run. Three, two, one, go. There we go. It gets going. So Banjo-Kazooie 100%, the speed run, basically the guidelines for 100% or the rules, is that you have to get all the empty honeycombs, all the musical notes, and all the jiggies in the game. Those are like the major collectibles on the title screen. And so after you do all that, and whatever way you can do it, you have to beat the final boss, and that's the end of the run. So for the very beginning of the speed run here, I'm just going to be going through the tutorial section. Uh, Bottles the Mole there asks you if you want to take your time, go around, learn all the moves. Um, but we just tell him we already know the moves, so we're just going to go through. I need the empty honeycombs for 100%, so I'm going to um, just go around the area collecting all these empty honeycombs. And what they do is they're going to give me an extra health. Uh, I thought it would be good. I have chat open right here. I can see all you guys, so, you know, hey, guys. Uh, if you have questions, that's going to be, like, the best way that I can talk about the, the speed run and, uh, and any little things that might be confusing. That would be great for me, as many questions as you have. Uh, what about Mumbo Tokens? So Mumbo Tokens are in this game, and there is actually a finite amount of them, but they don't count towards 100% because they're not on the total screen. There's like a total screen on the pause menu, and you just need to fill that whole thing out for 100%. Mumbo tokens also get used throughout the run to transform into different things. So yeah, basically right now we only have the moves from the beginning of the game that Bottles teaches us in this tutorial area. So the fastest form of movement here is actually this rolling and fluttering that I'm doing. So there is a faster way to move in the game uh, coming up once we get to level 1, but we don't have access to it right now, so we're just rolling and jumping around to get all these empty honeycombs. Have I ever ran Conker's Bat for a day? I tried to learn it once, but uh, I didn't find it as, uh, as fun as the Banjo game, so I've been on my channel, Duck, twitch.tv slash duck, I've been doing like Banjo series speedruns for ages, years and years and years. Here's a question, do you prefer Banjo-Kazooie or Banjo-Tooie? Just the slightest edge I would give to this game, Banjo-Kazooie. I really do think that uh, it's it's like their, it was like their uh, rares, like dream project that they had worked on for a really long time and they kind of perfected it. And then Banjo-Tooie is really good, but I just had a little bit of issues with some of the like backtracking and the, all the extra tedious stuff. There are one or two extra honeycomb pieces in this game, if you remember correctly. You, I assume you only have to fill the final health for 100%. No, actually, casually challenged. You have to collect all of them in the game because they fill out the total screen. So I need every empty honeycomb in the game. All right, so we've entered here Mumbo's Mountain. Uh, so yeah, in every level, there's 100 notes, 10 jiggies, and two empty honeycombs I have to collect before I can leave. Uh, along the way, I'll be collecting things like feathers, eggs, mumbo tokens, because they are needed for the speed run so that I can actually progress and play the game. Uh, you don't have to get all of them, though. So right now, I'm still rolling and jumping and fluttering, but uh, there's a few moves I can learn in this level that'll help me move around a lot faster. So this is the first move you're going to learn. It's the ground pound move. It's called beak bust, and so you use it to uh, yeah, ground pound things. I'm going to leave those notes there for later. You might notice that I, like, skip notes. Obviously, this is a personal best, so I didn't miss any. Like, we know I got 100%, <laughs> so spoiler alert. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes you skip some notes because it's faster to actually come back to that section and get them later. You don't know this game well. Are there a lot of glitches that you use, or is it mostly about routing and technique? Um, back when the game, like a long time ago, speedrunning this game, it was so much about like being fast, just technique, going quickly, kind of like Super Mario 64. But um, nowadays, there has been quite a few game-breaking, technical, frame-perfect, insane like glitches that we are going to get to later. And with the help of this tool where I can color on the screen, check this out. Did you guys know I could do this? So I can do that. So we can really get dive into some of the more complicated, convoluted stuff. Smiles in chat, by the way. Favorite level in Banjo-Kazooie? Um, I really like Rusty Bucket Bay. I know that's controversial because a lot of people hate that level. But uh, I just think the music's so good and it's a, little, it's a nice challenge. In the speed run, it's really fluid. So 
So yeah, I mean, just right now, I'm just been going around. I got a move called Talon Trot, and so this is the move where you ride around on Kazooie's back, and uh, that's the fastest form of movement from now on. Um, and I'm just going to be, yeah, in Talon Trot, running and jumping around. So for that boss, Conga, you have to hit him three times, but you have to wait for him to throw oranges at you. So what I do is I, like, get closer to where I'm going to go next and then, like, snipe him off screen. Pretty nice little speed run trick there. I might make a mistake here. Something tells me I make a mistake here. I'm supposed to get the this orange tile and make my way to the second orange tile in one movement. But I think, did I miss here? No, no, that's clean. All right, nice. I don't remember. It was a pretty clean run. We'll see what goes down. Uh, any other questions? Let's see here. How can you execute speed runs more successfully? How can you not lose time within a speed run? Uh, I think a lot of practice. I think what I notice from a lot of speedrunners and speedrunning communities is that when people learn, or even when people get pretty deep into running a game, they tend to put a lot of focus on the first part of the game. This speedrun is two hours long, so I think the trick to having a good personal best, don't like jump into the hardest tricks right away when you're learning the game. Do a little bit, oh see I made a little mistake here climbing this termite tower. Um, don't jump into all the hardest stuff right away and treat the beginning of the game as importantly as the end of the game because losing 10 seconds in level 1 is the same as losing 10 seconds at the end of the game. But a lot of the time it'll be like, oh, I only lost 10 seconds at the end. That's so insanely good. But if you lose 10 seconds at the beginning, you reset the game. So I feel like it's all about practicing and treating the entire game the whole way through the same. Uh, so like for a two hour run, like I have to constantly be practicing the last levels because you don't play them as much. Are any of the sandcastle cheats useful for this run? Sandcastle cheats are not allowed. Is this game not faster in Japanese like most other N64 games? It's not. This game was actually it was released in uh, the UK and the USA first, and when this game was released, there was a, uh, a problems with it, little glitches that were patched before they released it in Japan. So I'm running on like the earliest release of the game so I can do certain glitches and tricks. And if I ran on Japanese, I wouldn't be able to do those glitches. So I know you just and said so sand castle glitches are, sorry, cheats aren't allowed. Um, yeah. Theoretically, if they were, would there be any worth using in a run like this? Um, well, there's one that lets you, like, you, there's a, several sandcastle cheats that let you, like, open levels. Uh, mm -hmm. Inputting all the sandcastle cheats is actually is super, super time-consuming. Yeah. Because the sand, in the sandcastle, when you input the cheats, you do one letter at a time, and they're all over the floor, and it's usually, like, a full sentence. So, I, I mean, I don't know too well, but I, I'm wondering if, like, maybe opening some of the levels early would be helpful mm -hmm. for the speedrun. But then, you know, they're, they're not allowed. They take a really long time, so it's, it's almost debatable whether you'd even using them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, but that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, cool. So one of the glitches that was patched on the Japanese is a termite glitch. So I climbed up this hill right here without the use of the termite transformation. In that level, you're supposed to go into Mumbo's skull and uh, you're supposed to transform into a termite to get up certain steep slopes. That's one of the things that was patched in the 1.1 release. Uh, but since I'm playing on 1.0, I can use that glitch to my advantage. I guess just the, the cheats aren't allowed just because I guess they're cheats. I don't know. <laughs> no cheats allowed on the speedrun. It's, it's, you know, these rules, a lot of these rules were put in place so long ago. I also, yeah, like I said, I'm not sure that they would come in handy. So I'm about to do a pretty cool glitch called Treasure Trove Cove Early. So the way you open new levels in this game is you go up to a puzzle and you put in the jiggies that you've collected. Uh, so... It takes a really long time to do that, and it plays a big cutscene of opening the level. So actually, for getting into Treasure Trove Cove early here, I clip out of bounds, get into the water, and then swim up underneath the level to enter it. I can enter this level without opening it, and I think that's a nice little time save. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. It's definitely an advanced trick, but it saves a good seven seconds. So if you really can get it clean, it's worth doing, and that was a really fast one, so I definitely saved some time. You're gonna notice that I actually speed. I actually uh, enter a lot of levels in this run uh, without opening them, 
Um, so you'll, you'll notice some of them are really complicated, convoluted. We can talk about them for a little while. They're very confusing, <laughs> but uh, you'll see when we get there. Is there anything particular in the run that makes 100% more appealing to you than any percent? Well, it's pretty common for Rare games. The company that made this game is called Rare, and it's really common that any percent is pretty much like... Oh, is my mic loud? Should I turn that down? I don't, I don't mind turning it down. Okay, there you go. I'll turn it down quite a bit. There we go. Is that better? Um, it's pretty common for any percent in these games to be basically... 100% minus a couple things. So for this game, there's um, there's 100 jiggies and 900 notes. And in order to complete the game any percent, you actually need uh, 810 out of the 900 notes and like 96 out of the 100 jiggies or something like that. 94 maybe. So 100% uh, is more appealing because this game basically is just a game where you have to get everything anyways. They don't really have like an any percent. Um, now that the game's been out for so long, there's several crazy glitches, which makes you skip having to get a lot of jiggies, but you still have to get 810 notes. There's no way around that. So I don't know. I, I like any percent. I've ran it for a while. It's really interesting in its own way, but 100% always just felt like a cleaner speed run overall. The game on the right could be a bit louder. It actually sounds a teensy bit too soft. Uh, okay. I don't know if I can do that on my end or, but cool. Three hour estimate? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil what I got, but this is a uh... cool, cool. I won't touch anything. I just turned my mic down because someone said it was loud. 94 jiggies. Yeah, that's a lot of jiggies. So Treasure Trove Cove is the level we're in right now. And what's really interesting about this level is that you learn how to fly with Kazooie. And so in this level, you can uh, fly or swim into a lot of the jiggies. And in case you noticed, every time I pick up a jiggy, I do a little dance. It's like a little jiggy jig that he does, like to celebrate getting the jiggy. And uh, it's about four seconds. So every time you can fly into a jiggy or swim into a jiggy, uh, you're actually saving the, the four seconds of the dance. So you're going to see me doing that a lot in this level. You want me to explain FFM? All right, I guess it's worth noting that the version of the speed, there's actually two versions of 100% that are ran. One of them uses a glitch called FFM. I'm not using that glitch here. Uh, you can set up a separate file to activate the glitch on a new file where you actually start with all of Bottle's moves learned. And that saves quite a lot of time because there's other tricks you can do. But for me personally, I've always really just enjoyed doing the uh, the more vanilla, like, get into a file and start speedrun. So, yeah, I, I, I don't have any of the bottles moves learned right now. I'm uh, I'm going through the game as if I just started a brand new game and 100%ing it. Little mistake there. See, I was trying to fly into that jiggy without landing because I need to stay in flight here, and I missed it. So, uh, yeah, it's really scary because it's very easy to land. Um, but yeah, flying into a jiggy there, flying into the Jinjo jiggy, I skip the dance, and now I can land and move on to the next section. Alright, so uh, that's Snacker the Shark. I'm sure if you played this game as a kid, you uh getting a little PTSD right now, but it's okay, we got out. Didn't get eaten by the shark. This is a little trick called Nipper Skip. You can actually just jump inside of him and hit his hitbox from the inside out. You skip the entire fight and take a little bit of damage. So you'll notice a lot through the speedrun that I'm taking damage on purpose. It's very risky because dying in this game makes you lose all of the notes that you collected, which means I would basically have to do the whole level over again. I get extremely close to die dying in this room. Uh, I have one health there, and if either of those crabs touches me, they could even be touching me during that cutscene. Um, but they didn't, so I lived, and the run lives on. Little, uh, scary moment, though. The thing is, with the earlier parts of the game, like, you just risk it, hope you don't die, and, and if you do, you just start again from the beginning. That's what speedrunning is all about. Have you had runs die from cutscene crabs? Yeah, you can. There's a, there's that a sounds horrible. <laughs> there's a, there's, yeah, there's a decent chance that you... Enter that room, jump into the jiggy, land on a crab because it's right under the jiggy, then do the dance while you're still inside of him, and when the cutscene ends, he hits you again. 
And you always oh, enter that room with two health. So it's just a, there's every single run you do, there's a pretty sizable chance you die in that room. <laughs> and you just don't care. You just hope it doesn't happen. So this is the last little flying section here. Uh, there's a few things we want to collect in flight, so we can't land for any of this. We get a mumbo token, and then we hold up at a very specific point so that we can collect those three notes on the shock pad, that landing. And then we're going to sneak into this alcove here to pick up this jiggy, stay flying, because they actually put an empty honeycomb cell all the way out into the water. Uh, you're supposed to swim out and get it, but I'm going to fly and get it. Stay in flight. I don't want to land yet. Because uh, I want to get to the top of this platform here. A few notes and one more X we have to hit. <laughs> Which level, from my personal experience, is the most difficult or killed the most runs? So, hmm, Gobi's Valley is very difficult for speedrunning because it is full of, like, tricks and glitches, and if you fail any of them, you do lose a ton of time. Uh, so, Gobi's Valley can be really stressful, and uh, and it can kill a lot of runs. I think a lot of people would agree on that. Click Clock Wood is also one that's decently difficult. It's not, it's not one of the hardest levels, but it's at the very end of the game, and it's very long. And there's a lot of ways your run can die. So you're always really nervous, right? Even though it's not difficult to execute, if you have nerves going into Click Clock Wood, it can kill tons of run. And that's after like an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes of speed running the game already. So for this run, I'm like pretty nervous by the end and you'll see that. So here's our first death warp of the run. I'm gonna jump and ground pound into this Jiggy. I land on the crab with one HP, which kills me, but I have actually collected that Jiggy. It skips the dance, and the last dance in every level is actually a lot longer. Banjo celebrates having collected all the Jiggies and does a second dance. So it's important that uh, the last Jiggy we collect in every level is, is not collected where I'm gonna be doing this dance right here. So that's a huge time save. And uh, dying takes you right back to the exit of the level. So you, we, we basically death warp in every single level almost. So now I'm heading back into this room because I learned shock pad and we have to open Clanker's Cavern. The puzzle's up here. So we put in a few jiggies and we're getting ready to head into Clanker's Cavern. What's up, injured camel? How you doing? This game's really nice to speed run because if I ever feel like I don't have anything to talk about, I can just stop talking because the music is so good that everybody's just chilling and enjoying the tracks. All right, so what's important about this, uh, the no FFM run here actually has, it's pretty um, important that I collect every mumbo token that I collect and I don't miss any because we actually transform a lot right at the beginning of the run in this speed, in this uh, category. So all the mumbo tokens you see me get, like some of them like that one might seem like they're really slow, but you need each and every single mumbo token that's in the route right now because there's just not a lot of leeway. So with Clanker's Cavern, it's actually a very difficult level. Uh, I put it at one of the highest difficulty levels because everything is based on a cycle. Clanker the whale, he's like a mechanical whale. He's always bobbing up and down. And he's shooting a, a nail out of his blowhole. And there's all this stuff that's just happening throughout the level. And this is what's called a cycle. So I have to like Drinking. completely hey. Just once a week. go perfect with my movement as fast as I possibly can. Obviously that's the idea, but there is no room for error from the very start of this level to when I enter Clanker for the first time. So it's really important that I make it down here fast enough to get that specific air bubble. My swimming has to be absolutely perfect. 
And yeah, it, it, if there's even a little tiny mistake, I lose even a fraction of a second. I will not make the cycle. I do believe in this run, I make it really cleanly. Nice, yes. This is also my favorite childhood game. Type 1 if Banjo-Kazooie is your favorite childhood game. Type 2 if it might not be your favorite, but it might be one of your favorites. And type 3 if you hate this game. I don't know why you're watching, but that's also fine. You can type 3. You drinking with the crew in a Discord call? So I've gotten everything down here. I have 22 notes. I got the green Jinjo. You have to get an extra air bubble to make it to the surface without drowning. And my swimming, like I said, once again, has to be absolutely perfect here. We're all adults here. I mean, I have no idea if that's true. How often do I'm I go through I'm seeing a lot of fours in chat. <laughs> I'm not sure I, what four is, but... <laughs> it's not an option. You're not allowed to type four. Mods ban anyone typing four. <laughs> Uh, I probably go through a controller a year. You know, it really is the sad truth of N64 games. There's just not, no way around it. Uh, maybe I get more than a year out of them sometimes, but with speedrunning N64 games and the stick being so, like, feeble, you really need a good stick, and it uh, doesn't last all that long. All right, so we got a little ring section here. You have to go through all these rings in order. The next ring turns green. And if you're good, you can get a 23 left on the timer if you do a very perfect little ring section here. I think I got a 22, but it's a pretty clean 22. We have a pretty fast rings here. I definitely think Clankers, for sure, for me at least, has always been one of the hardest levels to do perfectly. Um, this Clankers and this PB is pretty dang good, though. I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know, it's, a, it's medicine, I guess. Do I run emulator? Nope. Uh, I speed run on the original release of the game, on the original hardware with the original controller. Just all OG, baby. That's the fastest version, too. All right, so I think this is where I make a little mistake. Uh, you're supposed to jump to this pole, which I think I make this jump. It's very tight, and you even need a little ground pound at the end to make the height to get onto this pole. Every single thing, once again, has to be completely perfect or I'm not gonna make the cycle. Uh, I get hit here. I think it's already over, because I get hit by that enemy. Uh, so I have to make my way around the whole stage on the outer edges of the stage, where are these all these pipes with things I need. There's a Jinjo, a bunch of notes. There's an empty honeycomb in here. We do a little nifty trick where we go in and out with a backflip. That's pretty tough to do. Um, but yeah, because I got hit by that chomp at the beginning, I already have no chance of making the cycle I want. I even miss a note there, so... But I got a cool frame-perfect mid-air jump. That means nothing, but it was really cool. Actually, it probably saved me a little bit of time. I don't know. Not making the cycle. Sad. But anyway, so I missed one bolt cycle here. That's going to lose me about eight seconds. But since I got the other cycle and everything else with this stage was so clean, I'm not bothered. I think that's one thing that happens with a lot of speedrunners is making small mistakes early bothers them too much. You really have to like stay focused and, and try your best. Like I rage a little bit here and there. We all rage a little bit here and there. But you really got to make sure you know the run's still good. You can still get a PB. Don't worry about little time losses early. You gotta keep going. Shots for box. You cannot skip text on Xbox. That's why it, Xbox is incredibly fast. There's no lag at all, but uh, you cannot skip the text. So there's a lot of extra like cutscenes and sitting around waiting. Once again, getting jiggies while flying, skipping the dance. I have to get up to this area. This is where you learn in vulnerability feathers from bottles. Uh, these are gold feathers that you collect that make you immune to damage. So you're supposed to use them to go through these saw blades, but I, you know, I'm really good at timing it at this point. It looks pretty hard. I mean, you probably can't see it because you haven't played the game enough, but I'm kind of just weaving in and out here perfectly so I don't get hit. The 100% route is like massively changed. 
could be really fun to pick it up again because that was a joke <laughs> there's actually no hitbox on the right side of these saw blades as long as you just walk on the right side you won't get hit at all anyone can do it you can do it right now like i i impressed a lot of people in the chat like this guy was whoa all capital letters i should have just kept it or something i don't know kept the bit going <laughs> All right, so coming up on the end of this stage here, uh, there's a few more things we need to do. Uh, there's a, a room full of crabs, mutant snippets that we have to kill, and they give us our last, our second last jiggy. There's a pretty uh, precise way to kill them so that I can actually end that sequence standing where the jiggy spawns. So by collecting the jiggy like during the cutscene of where it spawns, I'm actually going to be saving quite a bit of time here. Oh yeah, this is pre-recorded gameplay. Uh, yeah, it's a PB that happened before. We're just going over it. I'm answering any questions chat might have about banjo speedruns and uh, having a good time. So yeah, by killing those crabs with the eggs, I can actually position myself right where the jiggy spawns, right when the cutscene ends. So I... Uh, I saved a bunch of time doing that. Yeah, it's always so it's near always perfect fun. clankers. I missed one bolt cycle. Everything else was super clean. Really happy with it. Like a glitch hunter. Uh, but I do and the way that we death warp in this stage is we're actually going to drown. So if you notice on the left side of the screen, right here, first time drawing. Okay, so this is my air. Um, each one of these blue air things takes about 10 seconds to go away so everything i have to do here before i drown i have one minute to do it there's some notes i have to collect to get 100 notes there's one more empty honeycomb i have to collect to get the last empty honeycomb and there's a jiggy i have to get which is quite far away uh for beginner speedrunners, this can be pretty intense you but uh if you know what you're doing you actually have quite a bit of leeway but it's still always pretty scary to watch for if you haven't seen it before. Blunny combs. I wouldn't have to learn too much. Where might one go to learn more on this run? Well, I'm always speed running banjo games on my channel if you want to follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash duck. Uh, there's also a banjo speed run Discord. Oh. <laughs> he blurred. <laughs> He's just preemptively blurring my chat because there might be some curse words. Um yeah, you can also join the Banjo Speedrun Discord. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, you can find it on like speedrun.com slash banjo. The whole Banjo series is there with a bunch of tutorials and resources for you. Moving some files around. He's just worried that uh, he, as soon as Simple Flips entered the chat, he censored it. That, let's just say that. Like internet files or like. Well, I don't. I don't know if he even says anything bad, but it's all good. So, anyways, I'm opening Bubble Gloop Swamp now. One of the biggest differences between um, FFM and no FFM 100% is that Bubble Gloop Swamp is not going to be the last stage. I'm going to be doing Bubble Gloop Swamp next. Uh, in FFM, you actually take the B from Click Clockwood and go to Bubble Gloop Swamp and do it at the end. But uh, yeah. Bubble Gloof Swamp is more traditionally where it would be placed in, a, in an actual playthrough of Banjo-Kazooie, which is like level four. A walkie super There's no actual order to the stages, I don't think. I, I think as long as you have the jiggies you need and the notes you need to progress, you can do whatever you want, but... Shoutouts to Simple Flips, baby. It's pretty much actually impossible to get A rank or something. But it was always funny when people knew it was you and they would like pick you up and take you to the end. What exactly is FFM? Uh, just brief, brief explanation. There's a way to start the speed run with all the advanced moves learned already at the beginning. Uh, so that's the version of 100% where you save like three minutes um, by starting with all the moves learned. But what I've been speed running for the last like year and a bit is no FFM where I don't use that glitch. I just put my game in the console, pick a file and go. You're gonna have my and so I, yeah, I have to go learn all the moves. There's actually a move that you skip, which is in Bubble Gloop Swamp. 
Anyways. There's a, a way to wear these rubber boots. They're called the wading boots. And uh, they make it so that you don't take damage from the piranhas in the swamp. And also you can use them in other parts of the game to prevent damage wow. from, you know, certain That's bodies cool. of water that hurt you. Uh, but we actually don't learn them because anytime that there's water that hurts us, we just... Oh, that's a big mistake, actually, that I just made. I remember this... Yeah, you might have to uh, censor a lot of bubble gloop because I make a lot of mistakes here. <laughs> and I swear a lot, I'm pretty sure. But that's okay. Um, it's a bad bubble gloop swamp. I remember that very clearly. Re really lose a lot of time on this stage, unfortunately. But... Uh, the rest of the run is really good, spoiler. Lots of mistakes happening here. I'm actually trying to make a cycle here as well, but I'm just losing, I'm just spaghettiing everywhere. One mistake led to another, you know what I mean? So much with Bubba Blue lately. And it's the easiest fucking level. I don't get why it'd be like that. For this game, if you leave a level with 60 notes, do you need to go collect all the notes again when re-entering, or just the remaining 40? So on the original release of the game, which is what I speedrun, if you leave a level with less than 100 notes, then you have to collect them all over again. It's the same as if you die. That's why this speedrun is extremely unforgiving. If you die with 99 notes in the 100% speedrun, the run is not completable unless you do the entire level again and collect every single note all over again. So I need to make sure before I die, in any stage, I need to have every note collected. You also lose your Jinjos. So, really important to uh, not die. That's, if I had any advice, don't die. Yeah, this PB is from four days ago. I actually got invited to come on the show like a week ago after getting a six second PB. And uh, I got another PB between then and now. So we're using the new one, the good one. He straight up told me that he was going to get a better <laughs> PB before the show. And he I did. I knew it. The next day. <laughs> <laughs> the same day I said, today I'm going to get a new day? PB. No, no, I, I, I said that. And then I got all the way to the end of the game, and the run died at, like, the very last moment in the oh, run. Oh, no. <laughs> and then the next day I PB'd. <laughs> so I, I knew I was I was on fire. Like, I was, you know how speedrunners sometimes get hot and get multiple PBs in a row? Mm -hmm. I was in that zone, and I knew something big was coming. And I'm really happy it did. Feels good to get a good PB as a speedrunner. Obviously, that's why we do it. Supposed to tell anyone about the kissed part. What's, What's the a Jinjo? Uh, they, I don't know what they are. They look like kind of like gummy bears. Uh, they, uh, there's five of them. Grunty put a curse on them so they can't move, but when you touch them, you free them. If you get all five, they give you a jiggy. So obviously, I need to get all the Jinjos to get all the jiggies. Bubble Glue Swamp, uh, in general, there's probably not a lot to talk about really. It's just. You know, the gimmick here is you're in a swamp and there's piranhas in it and they're hurting you. And uh, there's a couple of like really long, kind of tedious mini games I have to play. Um, and so it's, it's one of the longer stages, but it's, uh, it's uneventful in a way. Oof, didn't mean to take damage there. Yeah, this bubble, oh yeah. And even though I was attacking that dragonfly, Janky jank caused me to take damage. I can't even tell you what happened there. But uh, yeah, a little bit uh, dicey here, being at one health. I'm definitely supposed to be at like three health. And health management is crucial in this stage, so there's, this is why I lost tons of time. I need to figure out a way to get the health that I need to make it to the end. Um, and there's no really good way to do it. The world record of this cat specific category is 1 hour 59 minutes and 16 seconds. By Ploth. Why do I jump over the middle note every time on those logs? Jumping in Talon Shot is the fastest form of movement. If I stop jumping and just walk normally, then I'm going to slow down. And I have to go back on that log anyway, so I can just go get the note. 
uh, later and never stop jumping. I messed this up too. Yeah. Whew. This was a bad Bubba Gloop Swamp. So you're supposed to get moved during that cutscene by the turtle and there's a little glitch you can do where I can actually play the Simon Says minigame while he's showing me the first pattern. Uh, I messed it up though and that's pretty pretty big time loss. This is uh, by far this stage was where I lost the most time so everybody can you know feels bad man throughout this stage. Am I going to try to attempt to beat that world record at some point? It's not like my goal to beat anybody else except for myself. But, uh, you know, if it happens, it happens. I'm obviously always going to keep playing and, yeah, get better, obviously. So, we'll see. Okay, Chad, I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? The common questions I get. Favorite Banjo-Kazooie level? Point and laugh. Well, that's, that's, just, that's just rude. <laughs> well, your life has changed a lot since then. You went to Facebook. You came back to Twitch. You got yeah, this minigame is random every time. We're actually kind of hoping that the turtles go like one next to the other instead of like skipping over a turtle. Like the red to the blue or the yellow to the purple are like slower because uh, you have to go all the way over one turtle to the next one. A lot of people loving Freeze Easy Peak. It's definitely up there for me, for sure. Click Clock Wood. I usually see a lot of Click Clock Wood. I'm surprised Pretty no choco. one said the Monster Mansion, because that's my favorite one. That's my girlfriend's favorite, and I do believe she's hey. in chat, and I do believe she said Mad Monster Mansion. Yeah, she did. I'm a, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Mad Monster Mansion's awesome. That's the thing about this video game, is there isn't a bad level. There isn't a bad, like, track. Like, your Grant Kirkhope really killed it here. And uh, the level design is one of the best parts of this game. So this is actually a really precise uh, thing in Bubble Gloop Swamp. I have to get to this point of the level with full health and you just barely can make it through that swamp and collect every single note without dying. Um, and then you get to this section. So you need full health. That's why when I was taking damage earlier, it was a huge problem. Uh, I had to find ways to heal. I think I went way out of my way to get health at one point. Um, but I made it. It's really tight. Uh, and you die if you mess it up. Um, but then you gold feather through this last section of the swamp. And we have timed that it's actually much faster than learning the waiting boots and going through uh, without taking damage. Because those waiting boots make you move pretty slowly. So here we are in Mumbo's skull. This is the first time we're going to transform. We skipped the one in Mumbo's Mountain, and there's none in TTC or Clanker's Cavern, so here I go. Yeah, I had a little bit of trouble there. Uh, yeah, a little moment. Um, we're turning into a crocodile, a little green crocodile, and so I have some things I have to do with this crocodile before I can leave here. Let's see if I could base my favorite stage. I love it. It wasn't always. I really like Click Clockwood as well. I really like TTC and Freeze Easy Peak as well. Those are just some of the, those are like probably my four favorite ones. But here we go. This is a very long auto scroller mini game uh, where I have to beat Mr. Vile. Some of you who played this game might have memories of having a very hard time against this guy. There are some techniques you can use to beat him easier, but he still is a pain, even for professional top tier. This is my thing I've done for 10 years, we still have trouble with this guy. He's pretty tough. Oh, I don't sing the vile song. That's very interesting. I think I was talking to Simple Flips. <laughs> this, yeah, this is... <laughs> yeah, this is where we talked about something really important. Um, no washing machine yet. I think we do actually get a washing machine in this PB, and it's pretty funny, so I'll tell you when it's coming up. For those wondering what a washing machine is, there is a 1 in 40 chance 
that when you go to transform at Mumbo Skull, he will accidentally turn you into a washing machine as like a little joke, a little Easter egg. And then he'll turn you back into Banjo-Kazooie, and then he'll turn you into what he was supposed to turn you into. And it's really funny, but it loses 10 seconds, so we hate it when that happens. And yeah, 1 in 40 chance. I changed 5 times in the run, and I do believe we do get a washing machine. New York to the Aria, you can pretty much walk anywhere in Vegas, it's like a very small place. And then... And I guess I played poker for a couple hours, maybe, like a while. I actually made a couple hundred bucks. I, did, I had a pretty good poker session. But I remember I was walking back yep, to New vile. York at Vegas at night. Yep, that's, that's what's going on. So yeah, there's a few items in this room. Since it's an auto-scroller, a lot of the times in speedruns, when you have an auto-scroller, you're trying to do whatever you can that's useful. So I get all the items in this room and everything that I need before I actually bother trying to do this uh, minigame. What's most important about this minigame in order to beat it is that you uh, don't need to get a lot of Yumblies to win. The trick to winning is to get more Yumblies than Mr. Vile. So it's more important, even if you see like four right next to you, it's more important to always just get the one that Vile is going for, because then you get one and he doesn't get it. So a lot of people just run around collecting as much as they can, but it's more important to prevent him from getting them. There's a little pro tip. From your boy. I'm not excited to see how much time I'm losing here. This is one of the worst bubble loops yet, and they've all been so bad lately. Well, I hope you're enjoying it, Jerome the Nut. Yeah, if you're new to Banjo speedruns, I really hope you find this cool. I mean, I've always loved this speedrun ever since I started. I've been doing it for 10 years, so I must love it, but it's pretty cool to me. I know Nuclear and Spike are big Banjo speedrun fans as well. Pretty good speedrun. Yeah, the chat box is blurred out for the time being. I think it's probably... Yeah, Simple Flips is gone, so you can unblur the chat if you'd like. I mean, unless you just want to keep it blurred in general, because it's chat and it, they could say anything, but... I'm losing a lot of time here. I think they're pretty good. of time. That was a crazy save, though. So, if you don't know this, at the end of that Vile minigame, it switches to uh, red after the last second. So, when the timer... All right, and that's the end of Bubble Loop Swamp. There's a couple of... These notes under here, you actually can't get them as Banjo and Kazooie. They're, you you have to get them as the Crocodile. That's what they're there for. Uh, so I'm going to get some notes, a couple extra Mumbo tokens that are right next to each other, which is pretty fast. The last Jiggy, and of course we always Death Warp, so this Dragonfly is going to chase us around while we get the last few notes here, and then, uh, yeah. We'll die to that Dragonfly, having 100% of Bubble Gloop Swamp. And we leave as the Crocodile. I lost a lot of time there. Feels bad. So sad. But I never give up. Never give up, chat. Alright, so you obviously... Something that's worth noting right here, actually, for later in the run, is that you can't take any transformation out of, uh, this air, of, out of the area of the level where it's intended to be used. So as soon as I leave Bubble Gloop Swamp, I can't make it very far before Mumbo says, Hey, you can't... You can't be a crocodile outside of this room, right? So that's important to know for later because we actually bypass that and uh, we take a transformation way out of where it's supposed to go and it breaks the game in a huge way. So you notice here on my splits, this split is called Start FP1. So the next stage is Freeze Easy Peak. And because I am doing no FFM, I have to visit this level twice. In Banjo-Kazooie, you can 100% every level you enter the first time you enter it, except for Freeze Easy Peak or Gobi's Valley. Because there's a move that you learn in Freeze Easy Peak that you need in Gobi's Valley, and there's a move in Gobi's Valley that you need in Freeze Easy Peak to 100% it. So one of the stages has to be visited twice, and for me, it's Freeze Easy Peak. But Freeze Easy Peak 2 is not for a lot later, and you'll see what we do when we come back to Freeze Easy Peak for the second visit. Kind of the 
way. Is that a preference way. thing to do? Freeze easy peak first then, or? Uh, it's much faster. Okay. Much faster, yeah. It would be preference if you were just playing the game casually. That's the thing about it is like, you, there's no way to bypass it. Like, even if you're just playing the game normally, yeah. you have mm -hmm. to pick one to come back to. So right now I'm doing a glitch. Uh, this is uh, the Twinkly's mini game where you're supposed to like, I guess, uh, you know, pave a path for these guys, kill all the enemies you know, escort these Christmas lights to the tree. But if I kill the first guy and then get them all off screen, the other ones never spawn, and the mini game just finishes as fast as possible and none of the light bulbs get uh, stopped on the way. And then after that, you have to shoot uh, the button on the pod of the tree. You can do it off screen with a little setup. And now I have to fly through that star three times, and then finally the Jiggy will spawn inside the tree. Quickly, I'm going to be learning the move Beak Bomb, which is very important, and it's the move that you need to 100% Gobi's Valley. So I'm going to be doing a very difficult trick here called YOLO Star by landing on the tree, jumping, and double jumping back through the star, then ground pounding to go through a star the third time. I can go through the star three times. The game doesn't think there's any way you could have done that without being in flight. So after the cutscene ends, you stay flying, even though I la very clearly landed. Now, I mean, it's a YOLO star right there. If you've ever played a game like that, it's pretty amazing. But if you've played, there's three other games like that that are really, really good. So like, you notice the problems with the quarry when you, when you think about those. What other are my games? thoughts on Nuts and Bolts? I don't like that video game. I didn't really like it very much. I know some people like it. Way better. If you compare until dawn to the quarry, it's like completely not even close. No one in their right mind would think the quarry is better than until dawn. I guess the idea was that they were trying to make a game like until dawn. I mean, obviously, right? It's very similar. What newer game would I say is holding its value? What year frame do I have? Okay, so this part of Freeze Easy Peak, uh, people might remember having a lot of trouble with this. It's a uh, really frustrating thing, which is aiming your beak bombs. The only way to kill these snowman enemies is you have to beak bomb the uh, little X on their top hat there. And uh, this is pretty difficult to do. Uh, the trick to it is that wherever the camera is pointed, he will always beak bomb to the center of the screen. So you have to kind of line that up before you uh, use the move. So I have to go around the whole stage right now and uh, kill all these guys. And then um, I take myself out of flight and take damage intentionally here for the death warp at the end of the stage. Am I into Kingdom Hearts by any chance? Actually, yeah, Kingdom Hearts is like one of my favorite, all-time favorite series of video games. Did Fall Guys come out after 2020? Fall Guys is really good. Probably the best game. So yeah, this scarf, obviously we have to do the whole thing because it has notes all over it and those are required for 100%. So I climb all the way to the top of this snowman. Uh, something you might notice is that I'm completely ignoring Jinjos right now. Uh, so I have not collected a single Jinjo in this stage and I'm not going to be collecting them. Those will be taken care of in our second visit. But yeah, I gotta get all the way up to the top of this snowman to get the notes up here and also the Jiggy that spawned when I took out the Sir Slush enemies. At the moment. <laughs> so now I'm gonna fall pretty far, take a little bit of intentional fall damage. Uh, like every level, you kind of go through a lot of health management, figuring out how you're gonna get to low HP the very fastest so that once you've collected everything, you can death warp. And that's Boggy, who we just uh, helped him cough up a jiggy there. And we're going to be seeing him again later. He's pretty uh, a pretty bad dad. He left his kids home alone. They have no idea where they are. They they think their mom's dead. They just they they just have there's no one taking care of them and they're crying. But I make them feel better by giving them presents. And yeah, there we go. Now they're happy. And then to be 
but their dad's still not coming home. So that's a bit of an issue, but it's okay. More you could do, like, there's more creativity, more you could do, new ways to play. Uh, I just didn't really play it that much anymore. I never played a lot of Mario Maker 2. All right, so there's a lot of things you collect in this stage while you race Boggy, uh, which is something we're going to be doing pretty soon. But I need to collect a few things that uh, I can get right now um, that you can't get during the race so uh, so that I can win the race and still collect everything. The race is really, really tight, but it's like one of those things where since it's something you need to do, we try to get everything collected as much as we can during the race. Um, so yeah, we, we really try to limit what we have to collect before that. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a washing machine. I'm really angry because I got a washing machine in my last PB. And need I remind you, there's a 1 in 40 chance and it loses 10 seconds. And I got a washing machine not only in my la very last run that I did, but also on this stage. So I don't know what the odds are for that, but there we go. On a pretty good freeze easy peak, there goes 10 seconds. But hey, now I can show it off at victory lap. Type 1. Really difficult trick to do here where you get the empty honeycomb without getting the full honeycomb because I really don't want to get any more health. Uh, I want to die right after this race. So um, we talked about this earlier, but if you don't collect all 100 notes before you leave, then you're going to lose all of your notes. So on this first pass through, we do get all of the notes in Freeze Easy Peak. Uh, we leave behind some jiggies and such, but uh, we get all of the notes. And here we go. Now, uh, this part of the speed run is typically very much allowed and encouraged to spam way in the chat. So uh, feel free, go ham. Spam as, as much as you would like until the race is over. Is, is that way with an A or an E? Uh, with an A, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you'd like. <laughs> Well, hey, there's, there's the spelling for you. Oh man, I actually mess up in this race a little bit too. These races are harder than they look. Um, obviously a lot of maneuvering to get all the, uh, the stuff I need. I missed a lot of stuff and you really don't want to mess this up because Boggy has some rubber banding physics and you try to abuse it perfectly so that you don't lose, but you also can collect everything you need. But it all works out in the end. I did for sure lose some time here. I'm going for the note here. I don't care if I lose. There we go. Got everything I wanted. And we win the race just at the end. We sneak by him right at the finish line. A little intense. What's up, Meowix? What's up, Craig? You must now immediately stop spamming Wahey. Okay, anyways, uh, talk to the walrus here. He'll only give you this jiggy if you are transformed into the walrus. He gets freaked out by Banjo and Kazooie. So low chance of that happening. Uh, I get the last few notes. There's a mumbo token in the water. And then as fast as we can, we're going to death warp after we've collected everything. Again, I lost a bunch of time on the split. Too bad, so sad. But things start really picking up on the back half of this speed run. Which is why you should never give up, especially in a long speed run. A lot of things can happen. I end up behind. My splits are officially red. Two seconds. Capital D colon. So, I'm leaving the freeze easy peak area, so I must be de transformed back into Banjo and Kazooie. And what's about to happen is extremely confusing and makes absolutely no sense. It's 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 uh, really really <laughs> ridiculous glitchy stuff. So what I'm gonna do, I figured since we have this opportunity today, I'm going to let it play out. Uh, it's a trick called Mad Monster Mansion Early, and uh, I'm gonna let it play out, and then I'll go back. I'll look at chat if you have questions, which you will. 
and uh, I'll try to explain a little bit about what's going through my head during this section because this is a really good opportunity. I don't even get to talk about this while I'm streaming because it's so confusing and I'm in the middle of a run so I can't like talk about it too much and it takes a really long time to explain so we can actually have a really good deep dive into Mad Monster Mansion early here. So I'll just give you a little bit about the history of the trick first. Uh, this is one of the tricks that had a bounty, like people put money on it. If you could find a way to enter Mad Monster Mansion without opening the level, you would make bank. And someone did find a way, his name was the 8-Bit Beast, and, uh, and this is what it looks like. So this is, this is how you enter Mad Monster Mansion without opening the level. And just bada bing bada boom I go through the floor I'm now in the stairs under the stage I can jump right in it wasn't a super clean mad monster mansion early but it was good enough for me so now let's uh, let's do the thing I'm gonna go back and I go back I think I can how do I do it how do I go back here we go okay so we'll go back to the beginning first things first I uh, I open this gate because you have to do that with Banjo and Kazooie. There's actually a little invisible platform here. It's kind of funny. The So I'm on like an invisible platform that looks kind of like this and it goes all the way down to the uh, the hat here. There was supposed to be like a whole other room up in this area that they never made. That's why there's this invisible platform. Anyway, so I just, the only reason I jump up here is because I want to go back to the 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 loading zone where you enter the room as quick as possible and the best way to do that is to jump up here and void out through the bottom so i'm like this is when you go out of bounds and the game's like oh where do i put them we'll put them back in the room at the beginning so uh when i enter this room i enter it the same way every single time the key thing about mad monster mansion early is that every single thing that i do from this point to entering the stage is frame perfect it is exactly the same every single time in order to make sure that I get to a very specific spot on the floor where I can go through the floor. The spot the floor is made up of triangles. Like they look like this. Every little every little pixel, like little groups of triangles. And so every now and then you get these little holes in them. And they're like one pixel big. And you can go through the hole. So what I have to do is I wait for the screen to totally transition uh, to you know all the way open. And then I get into Talent Trot. I get into Talent Trot and I buffer and up, perfect up on the control stick. Now I have to pause at a frame perfect time here. So I pause the game, that's why the pause stuff is coming up. And what I'm looking for here is this exact spot on the stair. You just sort of, you get visual cues to make sure that you hit the right frame. There's this little bit of white that's showing right here next to the, uh, the black line that kind of looks like this. I see this little bit of white, I know I got the perfect frame, so I can do the trick. If I didn't get that frame, I would have to leave the room and re-enter it to try again. So now what you have to do is you have to wait a specific amount of time before I do a backflip up onto the stairs. And at this point, we're zooming in the camera and moving, like looking left and right uh, to try to change Banjo's facing angle. So here we go. I missed the pause there, so I can go back and forth and try again. I missed the pause there. but the, So this is how I do it in the speed run. See this blue egg is getting like stabbed through the bottom by this pole? If I see this, I know I got the right frame. So I'm looking for little images like this every time I'm pausing. You have to move left and right, all buffered, and then if you get the pause that you need, which is the correct frame, it'll look exactly like this. This egg will be getting poked through the bottom and so now I know I got the right frame, and I can unzoom in. I do a little beak barge, which is a perfect movement. 
and then I go for the next pause. I got this one first try. Basically how I look for this one is all these items line up perfectly with the side of the door. If I see that, we can move on. Here we go. Uh, what I do here is what's called a punch cancel. I'm actually doing a move where you press B while standing still, which causes Banjo to like punch forward like a bear. And uh, if I press B exactly one frame before I press A, then he'll move one pixel forward. So that's what I'm doing there. I need to move exactly one pixel forward. Uh, let's keep going. Get into Talon Trot before I do this pause. I got a first try. What I'm looking for is that there's a little space here between the egg and the two posts. That's the picture I'm looking for. Get another punch cancel. And now the next pause. I mess it up a few times. But what you're really looking for is... Hopefully I get it here. You want most of this tombstone with the red feather on it to be visible, but then some of it needs to be cut off by the screen. So every single one of these, what we call them is twirly whirlies, where we spin left and right to change Banjo's facing direction. They're all frame perfect, but you can see whether or not you got the frame by looking at these images. If you didn't, you can try again. That's the good thing. And bada bing, bada boom, that's the last pause. So we do three punch cancels, which puts us above that tiny little pixel in the floor and gets us into Mad Monster Mansion without opening the level. This trick saves one minute and 40 seconds. Does anyone say my favorite show? Despite it looking like it took a really long time. I don't think anyone said it. My favorite show is so, <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Love Lost. Not a lot of crazy glitches like that in the speed run, but when they, when they were found, there's, a, there's, there's now a couple of them. We'll get to another one later. It's very cool. Like people love that glitch. It's just so cool to see. Like, it's almost like an Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask type glitch, where like they do all these buffered perfect inputs to do some crazy glitch. And there's never been much of that in Ban anything like that in Banjo Kazooie before. But when the guy found it. I opened up a can of worms, and there's lots of them in Tui. If you watch my Banjo Tui run at, at Summer Games Done Quick, we do those exact same uh, things. They're called they're called um, bit clips, named after the eight bit beast who found them. <clears throat> there's a good team of people that worked on them, though, like Ring Rush and others. How long did it take for you to get good at MMR early? One of those tricks where it's actually easy to do when you know how to do it um, but it takes a very long time to learn Futurama is my favorite cartoon how do people find that stuff uh, with tools like we have uh, ROM hacks of this game where you can like practice the game and you can see certain aspects of the code like Banjo's facing angle and where his XY coordinates are and all sorts of sciencey tool stuff that I am terrible at and I'll never touch but uh, there are people that are very good at it I use an original Nintendo 64 controller. My current one that I use is this black one. I, I liked the first season. I didn't watch the second season, but I heard it. But my favorite one is the atomic purple one. Resources or advice that I can give to someone who wants to start speedrunning this. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, but there is a Banjo Kazooie speedrunning Discord. There's also, I have a Discord, discord.gg slash Discord. You can just join it by typing that into your URL. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash duck. I'll answer any of your questions, you know, if you want to start speedrunning a banjo game. I've been doing Kazooie and Tui for many, many years. Uh, speedrun.com slash banjo is going to have tons of resources for you as well. There's like lots of YouTube videos and written Google Doc guides and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, if you do follow my channel, I'm actually, since I got this PB, I'm very happy with the time right now. I'm going to be taking a little break from Kazooie, and most of what I'm going to be streaming moving forward is uh, Banjo Tooie 100%, which is a five hour speed run. So if you like uh, some cozy long streams, then uh, yeah, consider following me on Twitch. Not bad. Mad Monster Mansion, though. Uh, so far, there hasn't been a ton of stuff to talk about. We're just going through the stage, and uh, 
This stage is actually one of the ones that is more movement heavy. It's kind of funny. It came after like one of the craziest glitches, but the actual stage doesn't have a lot of glitching. It's more just like be very fast and very good at the stage. So in, for that reason, I actually find it one of the more difficult stages. It's quite long and there's not a lot of downtime. I can never even like read chat during the stage. It's just go, go, go. Getting notes, getting jiggies, do it like, you know, doing stuff like that. Uh, what time do I normally stream? Usually around 6 p.m. PST, so that's like 9 o'clock Eastern. A little evening stuff. Rick and Morty was I prefer Kazooie, uh, just by a slightest edge though, uh, Renato. Renato. No, this is live? What do you mean? Like, I'm killing it right now. No, I'm, no. I'm not playing right now. This is a... The show Victory Lap is about having pride in your PB and explaining things really in depth to people now that I have the opportunity because I'm not like in full focus mode trying to do the best I can I can talk about the game I can rewind I can draw I can explain any any questions you guys have I can answer to the fullest that's what the show's all about I don't fully understand that. it's like we hardly get opportunities to explain like that glitch you did to get into here early I would never be able to say all yeah. the stuff that I was able to say. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I haven't talked about that show with anyone because nobody knows what it is. That show is fucking awesome. <laughs> so good. That's like classic. So this is actually a really interesting uh, thing in the run. Most of these time sections, I'm going to pause real quick. Most of these time sections, we have the timer down here. Uh, where am I? Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Right here. This timer. Uh, most of the time, you have to have like speed shoes or it's this like really difficult section you have to do quickly. The timer runs out, the door closes, I'm not getting into the church. Uh, you are meant to have speed shoes for this section, but I've not been to Gobi's Valley yet. And Gobi's Valley is where you learn the speed shoes. There's a little trick, you might have seen me do it, where you pause, and I go back. Let me just go back. What happened? Oh, I went back to the beginning of the run, oh no! Oh wait, that was perfect. I'm such a legend. Okay. Um, yeah, so you're gonna see me pause twice. So see, I jump through the speed shoes and they say, you can't even use us. Um, so once I turn this corner, if I just pause the game twice, it actually stops the timer from going down for a little while. And it gives me more than enough time to make it into the church without the speed shoes. It's not possible to do that. Otherwise, you need to do the pause or use the speed shoes. So inside the church, there's it's a little bit of another, again, another just tricky movement and execution section. Not a lot of things that would be difficult to explain or understand. If Hailfire Peaks wasn't such an incredible level, you'd like Banjo Kazooie more than Banjo Tooie. I will say that's got to be that. That's probably is my favorite Banjo Tooie level. There are some things I like about Banjo Tooie more than Banjo Kazooie, but I think overall, I think because gameplay is so important to me. Like if you like list the things about a video game that make them great, and you, it's like your criteria, like level design, soundtrack, gameplay, story. Like if those are your four main points, I think Kazooie wins on all four. But I think Tooie wins in music. I think Tui has better music, and I think Tui has like a bit more of an interesting story as well. But Kazooie, because gameplay is so important to me, I, I do think this game is more fun to play. I've heard about Solar Opposites. Maybe I'll check it out. I have heard That's my reasoning for liking Kazooie a little more than Tui. That being said, they're both two of my favorite games, and I play a ton of Tui, and that's what I'm going to be doing on my stream after this. I'm going to be playing Tui. So the uh, the piano mini game you just saw me do that's the same every time. It's supposed to be like a Simon says, but if you know what he's if you already know the pattern, you can just do it way before he does, which is what I did. And then falling from here, we're gonna take intentional damage again because we have a uh, death warp to do. Uh, this part's a little sketchy. I'm trying to get around this ghost, but I actually yeah I make it around him without taking damage, which is nice. A little safe to leave the church with two HP. So I've done everything I need to do inside the church, and we move on. Tim and Eric, yeah. 
Watching Tim and Eric on Adult Swim in the I never run nuts and bolts. Never been a fan. It's like you're on drugs. I saw Tim and Eric live. <laughs> they did a but live people do speed run nuts and bolts. If you're interested in nuts and bolts speed runs, there are streams out there. The Banjo speedrunning Discord covers every single Banjo series game. Uh, and so does speedrun.com slash banjo. It covers every single Banjo series game and every speedrun. Hello, buddy. I'm going for speedruns you and to play on console. Uh, most speedruns are done on console. Uh, there, I think you, it's fine if you would like to play on emulator, but like the competitive scene in speedrunning is typically done on the OG hardware. Fun fact about the Aqua Teen Hunger Force theme song. I don't know if this is true, but I seem to remember hearing this. But like, obviously, if this is just something you want to pick up as a hobby, you don't have an N64, it's, it's, po it's very possible to play on emulator. Who's speaking in the background? It's probably past me. And he wrote it in the car on the yeah. way. Yeah. Have you ever played Gruntilda's Revenge on the Game Boy Advance? I have. I actually quite like that game. I think it's pretty good for a little handheld game. Enjoyable. Oh, I transformed into a pumpkin. So the thing about the pumpkin is he can fit into smaller areas than Banjo. So the honeycomb I just got with the pumpkin, uh, you can only get that if you're small, like if you're transformed and getting flushed down the toilet, you cannot go into this room as Banjo and there's a Jiggy in here, so we need to uh, be able to do that. How do I know these erudite facts? Is Diddy Kong Racing in the Banjo series? No. Diddy Kong Racing would be in a separate speedrunning uh, realm. It is a very popular speedrun though. So. Banjo is in that game. Yeah, so the pumpkin can traverse through all these areas where you have to be small. That's kind of the point of the pumpkin. He also does not take damage uh, in the water. And the well here, it's actually almost intended for you to come in here as the pumpkin and collect everything. For the longest time, speedrunners were coming into this well as Banjo and Kazooie and doing like very precise, intricate swimming around all of these tentacles in here. Um, but obviously the idea is if you're the pumpkin, you can just walk around and get everything. Um, and apparently we found out that it's faster to do that. So why weren't we just doing the way the game wanted? Sometimes you overthink things, I guess. <clears throat> but there you go, you die in the well. I got everything. That mansion was pretty good and we're back in the green. Having really like pretty solid mansions lately, which is you know it's always been a bit of a weakness. So the reason I had to open the gate with Banjo and Kazooie before entering that stage is because the pumpkin can't do it, and the pumpkin needs to enter this room. It is not possible to beat Banjo Kazooie without entering this room and raising the water here. As far as we know, to this day, there is no way to beat the game without doing this. Five years, like recently, where I like didn't watch any fucking TV, and I actually reset the game there because my speed run was bad. And April Fools, I didn't PB. It was a joke the whole time. Basically all I would ever no, this is a for like five years. this is an intended reset. Um, it prevents you from having to transform back into Banjo and Kazooie and make your way all the way back through the lair. Uh, by resetting the game and going back into my file, it puts me back at the start of the lair, and I'm already Banjo and Kazooie. I'm not the pumpkin anymore. What's up, Magic Weaver? Do I know about Project Dream? I do. Actually, go out and do it. Most of the time, I'd just be like, "Yeah, cool. Sounds like a cool show. Wow." I would never actually watch it. But now, why is the random voices talking over me? I think it's just my voice, right, from the past. <laughs> So this is the Clanker's Cavern Witch Switch Jiggy. This is the best time to collect this because you have to ground pound those right at the beginning of the lair. And we just reset the game, took us back here. I'm really liking it, Cheek Pincher. I'm like, I've and we're going to be entering the level Gobi's Valley. This one's another one that's uh, pretty technical. There are some glitches you're going to see me do. 
They're pretty difficult to pull off and super risky. You could lose a ton of time, but the highest level of speed running, you got to try to do everything, save time. So I'm not going to spoil anything, but we'll just see how this Gobi's Valley goes for us. In my opinion, the hardest stage of the run. Oh my god, I meant to practice this fucking ring. Oh no. Well, thanks so much, Piccolo's Cape. Oh well, let's see what happens. It means a lot hearing that. You know, it's always good to know that people still have an interest in these games and, and speed runs and stuff. My favorite movie is Kill Bill. Uh, do you want me to turn my present mic up a little bit, or is it cool? So, the beginning of Gobi's Valley is right off the bat. I'm doing something that's really difficult to do. Uh, I don't have speed shoes, I don't have waiting shoes, and I have to go through the sand here, collecting notes, and we do a trick here called Gobi Clip. So let's see here, I could actually pause real quick. So I clipped through here. Um, there's, can I go back a little bit? Yeah, here we go. So uh, right here, I have Notice my health is down to three. Up here, and I have three HP left. I actually had to gold feather into this stage because it's really important that I enter with full health. Um, so right off the bat, we have to get a kind of precise trick where I wiggle up against the wall. So it's a little like left-right wiggle motion right to the left of this black line. And you can actually clip right in inside of this uh, sphinx. So... Boom, clipped right in. And if I didn't, oh, I turned off the video again. I'm so trash. Start over. Okay, I can get there, I can get there, I can get there. Oh, a little too far. <laughs> I pressed stop. Who, who would have thought that's bad? Okay, anyways. So I clip in and I do it first try, which means I actually have a couple of health left over when I enter the Sphinx from the inside. This prevents you from having to do the puzzle where you open this area. So far, so good on this Gobies. With the first try Gobi clip, we uh, we enter here. We do little nifty tricks on these magic carpets. So you have to shoot the eggs into these guys. They eat the eggs, and then the carpet goes up. As this one's going up, I can do a, a long shot into that one's mouth. So that right when I land on this carpet, it goes up. Little time saves, really nice. I really think there's not even a lot of competition. And uh, yeah, then we just collect everything else in this room and, and head out. What's the best Banjo-Kazooie music and why is it Click Clockwood? The best Banjo-Kazooie music is Rusty Bucket Bay. Come on. It's such a banger. So what you're going to notice in Gobi's Valley is that I'm actually running towards the camera here. That's so that this ring doesn't spawn. This ring doesn't spawn until it's on camera. And you're supposed to fly through all of these rings. But I can actually get to that ring as it's spawning and rise with it, which means I can just jump through it. So if it's not on screen, it won't spawn. I just make it spawn only when I get there. And uh, you're gonna see that a couple times. We actually don't fly, th we only fly through one of the rings and you're intended to fly through all five of them. What are you doing lately? This switch here actually makes an empty honeycomb appear so it's mandatory to hit that switch because I need all the empty honeycombs. And a lot of Gobi's Valley is entering different pyramids. There's a lot of pyramids uh, and all of them have notes and jiggies and such, which we need for 100%. So that's the idea behind this stage. Uh, this um, memory match game is the same every time. You have to kill this mummy and as quickly as I can, I'm just gonna hit all the tiles in order. Gooner, I cannot answer that question. It is a family-friendly channel, but DM me. TTC is really good music as well. But I find it's easier to speedrun while talking and interacting. Watching some other runners, they go quiet often in their runs. Oh, so uh, one thing that's really important to mention, I got 68 remaining on the timer in that minigame. You can get 69. Very unfortunate, I did not get 69 this run. Um... Yeah, uh, I do have a pretty good time. Uh, uh, I'm okay at like reading the chat, 
talking to the chat while I'm speed running. But um, at times I do find that I prefer to lock in a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna go pretty quiet near the end of this run. Um, but uh, I don't know, I think in, it's just, it depends on the day for me. Like some days I feel like if I talk to chat and I'm distracted, I, I screw up the whole time. But some days if I, uh, if I like focus too hard, I make mistakes too. So a little nifty trick here. I bounced off the wall to land right in front of bottles. He taught me the speed shoes and he refilled my health to full. He always does that. If you're low on health, bottles will give you HP when you're uh, when you're learning the move for the first time. So here, you have to give that guy five eggs and he makes the snake go up. And you get the jiggy up top. Thank you, company man. We also have Banjo and Tui on the Game Pass. Do I play on that sometimes? Sad Hannah, I uh, I do speed run Banjo Tui as well. That's what I'm. That's my plans for. Ever since getting this PB, I'm planning on doing Tui 100% speed runs. So if you think you're gonna like Tui 100 speed runs just as much as you're loving this Kazooie 100 speed run, consider giving me a follow at Twitch.tv/duck. Every now, you just gotta slip that in every now and then. You understand? You understand? So this part of Gobi's Valley is for sure the hardest part. It's a tricky flying section with extremely precise beak bomb here to break this rock. It has to be on like the top left pixel. I'm gonna try to do this without screwing up. Okay, fast forward a little bit. Here we go. This is where it is. Okay, so. This beak bomb right here is so insanely precise, you wouldn't think it, but I have to beak bomb like right in the top left. Okay, that was pointless. Right in the top left corner of that rock, uh, or else I will get the jiggy and land. I need to fly into this jiggy to stay in flight because I'm about to do a pretty insane trick here. And so there is a way to clip into this pyramid as well uh, through this little seam that connects like the two kind of levels. When I approach, I'm going to approach about here and I'm going to slowly lower myself down. As soon as I get to the bottom and I'm face, I'm pointing all the way down, if I do a beak bomb at the exact right time, I will beak bomb straight into this pyramid and straight into the loading zone. This is a nerve wracking trick for me. I always get nervous here and I always think it's not going to work. So here we go. So yeah, I approach about there. I start holding up so that I beak bomb straight into the loading zone. Very, very scary trick. Yeah, I liked Whiplash. I'm allowed to fast forward, rewind, whatever. I already got the run. <laughs> I'm just talking about it now. This is a personal best I got four days ago, Uncle Slim. I'm just going over it, answering questions, explaining how it went down. It's the best run I've ever done, so I'm just going through it. The teachers are fucking abusive. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. It develops some kind of. I'm yeah. I'm live, Uncle Slim. I can still talk to you. How you doing? So once again, getting these rings to spawn only when I arrive there, so that I can jump onto them and jump through them. If that statue is already spawned, it's impossible to do that, or it's very difficult to do that. So Gobi's Valley is just full of like, I don't know, for me, hardest level, full of difficult glitches and they, they're hard to do. And if you mess them up, goodbye, like huge amount of time. I currently right here, Crooked Cop, am watching Avad. Yeah, the, the thing that I'm watching is old. Me right now is right now. <laughs> that so I skipped that maze because I didn't want to do it I just jumped over it that saved a bunch of time there's nothing in there I needed uh, and then you got the jiggy got the uh, mumbo token got the Jinjo got out of there and now I'm down here at the bottom of this pool 
collecting some notes. There's a Jinjo, and also, since it's the last Jinjo, I can swim into the Jiggy. Uh, you know, that saves some time. I don't have to do the dance. And now I have to get the last ring of the level. So throughout this level, you've noticed I've been going through rings. I've gone through four at this point, and this is the fifth and final one. Uh, a very precise jump to make it onto the statue. Like I said, that's really difficult. Um, but I got a first try, which is great, because I have been screwing up on it a lot. Uh, this is a little trick. It's almost like a glitch where this guy can deal like a ton of damage to you. So I just took four damage at once, which is really good for the uh, death warp at the end of the level. It's optimal for me to have taken five damage there, but it's really hard to like actually pinpoint how much you're going to take. We don't really know how it works yet. So coming up on the last little section of Gobi's Valley, we get the speed shoes now that we've learned the move, uh, and we're gonna grab these last few notes. What's great about the speed shoes is once again, you collect a jiggy in speed shoes, you do not do the dance, so I get the ninth jiggy there in the speed shoes, and then I take off from the flight pad. I'm going to fly into Grabba. You're supposed to get this jiggy with the speed shoes, but you can also just beat bomb right into it. That's the final jiggy of the stage. We have to fly to this area on the, in the corner where there's two notes and speed shoes. And we also have to climb this water pyramid because I just clipped into it. But there's actually stuff you need on this pathway. A few notes. And I also collect some eggs and feathers while I'm here because it's really important that I have enough eggs and feathers to do the run. I did not need the grunty switch in the maze. And if you stick around till the end, you'll see why I don't need it. So as you can see, I get down to one HP in this sand. And then with the speed shoes, you can easily jump across the slope all the way into this area where you hit Gobi for the last time. They give you the final empty honeycomb piece and the final five notes are in here too. So all I have to do is grab all these and then I die in the sand. Actually, I think it is gold. And drum roll. Boom, gold split. Yes. That's the best I have ever done Gobi's Valley in a speed run. The fastest I've ever done it. So as you can see, we went from minus one and a half seconds and we jumped all the way to minus 34.8 seconds. This is where we got our first huge lead uh, going into Rusty Bucket Bay here. Gobi's Valley was clean. That's all you could say. Yeah, Undead and uh, Autonomy. My older brother actually showed me what speedrunning was back in 2012, like the dawn of Twitch. And uh, he showed me Banjo-Kazooie right away because he knew it was my favorite game. So I watched speedruns of this game for a really long time, and then I just thought, oh, I'll just see if I can do it. <clears throat> so I have to raise the water levels one more time. Makes it so that it's possible to get to Click Clock Wood, which is the final stage. And also it's possible to open Rusty Bucket Bay. And so uh, if you played this game, if you're a fan, you might know Rusty Bucket Bay as the point, the point of the game where the difficulty spikes tremendously for no reason. This level's like all of a sudden, this went from like a fun, sort of an easy game to like, crazy hard, right? This stage is difficult for a lot of people. <clears throat> Did I get nervous live seeing that gold split? Uh, it's weird, like I sometimes I get nervous, but this run I was just like relieved. I, it gets to a point sometimes where you're, you know, you're practicing, you're doing all the right things, you're doing runs and they're not working out. And I think I was at that point here, so when that happened, it was more of like a relief. Like, I deserved that gold split, and I finally got it. So I wasn't super nervous. I was like, good. Check. You know what I mean? Because I also noticed I didn't get the bit uh, alert either. So the trick to Rusty Bucket Bay is that there is a room called the Engine Room, which is for no reason at all, you know, pretty much the only room in the game where if you fall... There is a death plane at the bottom. You will die immediately just from falling in this room. 
Uh, the only other places in the game where this exists is in the final boss fight, which makes a lot more sense than a whole level. And, uh, or a whole room in a level where you can lose your notes. And another place in the lair, which doesn't matter at all if you die there. So this room is terrifying for a lot of casual players and it is pretty nerve-wracking for speedrunners. Because if you die in here, the run dies. I actually just had a run die in here a little while ago. Five or six days ago. Um, so yeah. What you're supposed to do is there's another room on the ship where you can actually slow down these spinning propellers. But speedrunners utilize iframes to roll and jump through them. So you just take damage from them initially and you use the invincibility frames to go through the propeller. It's uh, really time sensitive. You gotta do it really fast and it's pretty advise that you face the camera forward so that if you do get hit on the other side, which I did, I got hit backwards safely onto the next platform. So yeah, the engine room, the whole, if I had to give anyone advice who wants to play this game, do this room first. Do this room first. If you die to it, you don't lose 96 notes, right? You just lose the notes in this room. Do this room first. For no reason, you can just, if you fall, you die. There's nowhere else like that in the game. In my opinion, a little flaw in the game design. Oh, I fell in the water. Weird. Yeah, shoutouts to Nuclear for putting together the show and inviting me. That was nice. Hearts in the chat. Well, you've been a joy to have on. <laughs> this is fantastic. Thank you. Are you learning a lot? I am learning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could just run through the, the glass, seven hat, dead cat. I don't even, anyone could do that. You just run through it. For, for whatever reason, you can just walk through that glass. A little bit of slope abuse to get up here. I actually killed this guy because I got double tapped in the engine room. You can walk under him like some of the other enemies like this, but I wanted to make sure I had a good amount of health. A little bit of slope abuse to make it across that gap without having to go in the water. Little things. Save lots of time. Rusty Bucket Bay, this is gonna surprise a lot of people. This stage is actually, for most speedrunners, considered one of the easiest stages. Uh, probably in the top three easiest stages. Being the hardest stage casually in the game, but when you know how, you know the ins and outs, it actually becomes the easiest one of the easiest stages and then the shortest. It's one of the shortest stages too. I have played ukulele. I unfortunately didn't enjoy it that much. I was I think I had too high expectations. No way. So I messed up in this room. There is a frame perfect way that you can touch the jiggy here and touch the boss on the exact same pixel and you'll collect the jiggy without doing the dance. It, it ha doesn't have a very reliable setup. It's pretty tough to do, so I missed it. I think I jumped one frame late. Lost a little bit of time there, but it's nothing to worry about. At this point, I know I have a huge lead, and I also know that there are some splits coming up where I can save more time. So I, I'm not worried about having a slightly sloppy Rusty Bucket Bay. Obviously trying my best though. That's true, Neo. Basically, if you fall out of the tree and click Clockwood, you often die <laughs> from fall damage. You can take up to five damage from fall damage. Yo, thanks for the GA. Yeah, if you haven't been here the whole time, the way that I'm doing this is I'm just gonna talk about what I see, and mostly I'm just reading the chat. I'm do just answering any questions people might have. So if you got questions, throw them at me. Otherwise, I'm just gonna talk about the game as it goes on. And uh, if I see anything noteworthy, I'll point it out. If you see anything you don't understand, go ahead and ask. I might have. I feel like I've seen them all, but I'm not 100% sure. So it's also gonna be chat. coming up. Oh, go ahead. I was just no, gonna tell no, them no. to give you a follow real quick at twitch.tv slash duck. Very easy to find. I'll even put it in chat for y'all so you don't even have to type it yourself. 
Thank you. Yeah, if you like banjo, I'm doing it a lot. So you can check out my stream. If you, if you like it, you can follow. So this jump right here, lifeboat jump, that's the tightest jump in the game. You have a little bit of a setup for it, but you need to do a full jump, full rat -a tat wrap just to barely make it to that boat. And it saves only four seconds. And if you fail it, you lose 40 seconds. So that's, that's just where we're at with this game right now. And maybe a two hour speed run, but saving four seconds is huge. So we, we're still gonna go for it. My least favorite enemy in casual and then in the speed run. Uh, the skeletons in M Mad Monster Mansion can be really, really annoying in this game. They can often get right in your way. And they're also, you can't even kill them. <laughs> you don't understand calculus? Can I explain it to you? Am I playing on an old N64 or on a PC? Uh, I'm playing on an N64. How do those Gruntilda switches work exactly? I didn't really mention them, but in every stage, there is a Gruntilda switch, which will either spawn a Jiggy in the overworld, or it will give you access to a Jiggy in the overworld. So for the ones where it actually makes the Jiggy appear, we definitely have to hit those, because we have to collect the Jiggy. It has to exist. For the ones where it gives us access to the Jiggy, sometimes we have our own way of getting them. So in levels like Bubble Gloop Swamp and Gobi's Valley, we don't actually hit the witch switch. We have another way of getting the Jiggy that's in the overworld. <clears throat> What's a good time for beginners? Probably like sub to... I mean, like, if you're talking about like your first run, it could be anything, right? Depends how well you prepared. My first speed run of this game was eight hours because I just watched a bunch of speed runs. I didn't like learn anything and I just tried to 100% the game in one sitting. I did no preparation, I just like played for fun. But then, uh, you know, one thing led to another. I wanted to make my time better and better. And 10 years later, top five time. Uh, but I think for a beginner, if you're really trying to get the best PV you can get, probably like pretty quickly you'll want to get like under two hours and 50 minutes. Under three hours should feel really good the first time you get it. Yo, budding pow, bada bing pow, love that name. The thing about this game is that one death can cut will just cost you so much time. So if you're new to the game, that's the kind of thing that's gonna make you lose lots of time. Charmander would like to rename a split as well. Favorite mumbo transformation? I like the pumpkin the best. And life enthusiast. I owe them all split names. Okay, one rule, you all can't pick the same split. So that you all get a fair. So I've been damage boost I did a little damage boost there that was kinda neat. Uh got me down to Oh, I have three health. That's interesting. I have more health than I want to have right now. Uh, I didn't remember that happening. But anyways, I have three health, and uh, I got just got 100 notes. So we're already nearly done Rusty Bucket Bay, like I said. Quick level. Um, so yeah, we rescued that dolphin, but kind of just looked like it got sliced in half by the anchor anyways. What makes this game fun to replay for me? Well, I always replayed it growing up because it was my favorite game. And then finding out about the speed run gave me like a new reason to replay it, right? And uh, I actually think I'm lucky in the sense that this speed run is actually really fun to do. Not every game that I love is necessarily going to have a fun speed run. This one does. Really fun speed run. So a little trick here, if I grab that jiggy then jump into the water and then jump straight back into the jiggy without touching the ground, the game still thinks I'm in the water, and if you could tell there, I skipped the Jiggy Jig. That's a 10 second time save. Basically the MMM early split, right? This is the last room of Rusty Bucket Bay. Uh, that... Basically now I need to get down to one health, and since I have three, there's an easy way to do that. Uh, first I have to hit the switch to spawn the empty honeycomb that I need. For 100%. And this enemy actually deals two damage, so that's pretty uh, convenient for me right now. To get down to one, I'm just going to simply fly into this honeycomb, and once I have it, I can ground pound to take fall damage, and I'm done the stage. Uh, it was a bit sloppy. I lost a little bit of time to my best, but I actually managed to stay pretty close to even with the run that I was doing. I'm only, I only lost half a second there, so I'm more than happy with that. Still very green, heading into Click Clockwood. 
Does anyone speedrun nuts and bolts? Yes, they do. Not me, though. When I first played the game, I think my favorite level when I first played the game was Treasure Trove Co. for a really long time. I didn't make it very far as a kid. <laughs> the game came out when I was four. So, once again, we are going to be getting into a bit clip, which I talked about earlier with Mad Monster Mansion early. And so, as I explained before, the idea is that I need to get to this pixel on the floor where I can fall through. And it's very, very, very precise. You have to get there pixel perfectly. So, the way we do it on this, uh, this time around, so I'm just going to do a quick pause. So, when I hit the switch that I just hit, this switch right here activates the puzzle so that you can actually open the stage click clock wood. But I'm not going to do that. The reason I hit the switch was because this screen, once that cutscene ended, is the same every time. Banjo standing in the same exact location with the same exact facing angle. So from this point on, every single movement I do is perfect so that I can get to this extremely precise pixel on the floor. So let's get it started. The first thing I have to do is a, a bear punch, which is a perfect movement, a full beak barge, and before I can start running to the right, I need to wait for Banjo to look to the left. More importantly, there's an enemy that can be anywhere in this whole section, and if he's right here where I land, the trick will not work and I have to do it again. That loses usually close to 30 seconds if it's that fast, but if I like, let's say I'm running to the right here, which is what I'm about to do, if the enemy's right here and I run into him, I also have to restart. It's a super unfortunate situation with this trick where that there's this big luck factor of this enemy because it can ruin your perfect movements, right? So I'm running and what I'm doing now is it's a buffered perfect right input on my N64 controller. I'm holding exactly right and I'm looking for a moment on the screen to pause. So what you'll notice here on the pause screen is that this blue Jinjo's face is touching this green dot. That's what I'm looking for. I see that and I know I can do the trick. So moving on, uh, I do a couple more perfect inputs like a short beak barge and then a shock jump, a buffer jump to the left. There's it's perfect movement. Oh yeah, I, uh, yeah. So then I get the first pause. Once again, I'll, I'll show you on the next one. I'm looking for things on the screen to make sure I got it. Uh, for me personally, the way that I know I got this pause is there's two big black dots at the top of the screen that go over top of these honeycombs. And even a third one here, really. If I see that line up like that, I know I got the exact frame that I need to continue with the trick. So what I end up having to do here is once again, I do punch cancels. That's where you press B exactly one frame before you push A. Uh, I missed this pause, so I have to go back and try again. That's the pause. If you see this uh, little triangle, and the note is kind of like around it, like this. Anyways, it's just a little image I'm looking for to make sure I got the exact perfect frame that I need. Now I'm going to do three of those punch cancels that make me move forward exactly one pixel. And we do one more perfect frame, perfect twirly whirly pause. Uh, I check to see that this gold feather is touching this black dot down here. I got it first try, excellent. Um, and now we just do a couple more punch cancels and we're in the stage. This split was another gold. It was extremely fast, extremely well executed. That trick is so, <laughs> it kills so many runs for me. And we just saved 46 seconds on that split. Another huge gold. And that is something that you like to see for a PB. A big chunky time save like that. But yeah, anyways, those, those bit clips are insanely precise. Like I said, you, every single movement I do from hitting that switch to entering the stage is frame perfect and pixel perfect. How did someone figure this all out? Tools. They go deep into the code, and they make it so that you can find out exactly what Banjo's facing angle is and what pixel he's at, all that stuff. I'm not the type of guy to do that. Shout outs to those people, the scientists, the speedrun scientists. I'm just going to play the game. 
But uh, that was a super fast click Clockwood early. So once again, another stage that we don't have to open. Saves a lot of time. That one saves about 40 seconds. But here we are in Click Clockwood. A lot of people love this stage. Great music, really insanely good level design. The idea is that there's this big tree and every time you visit the tree, you can visit it in different seasons. So something that you do in spring will affect what happens in summer. You're basically going through the seasons. So if I hit this egg and I hatch this bird in spring, when I get to this nest in summer, the bird will be there and he'll be hungry, he'll want food. If I don't hatch the bird, he won't be there in summer. So I don't know, it's just a really cool level design for an N64 game that came out in 1998. Another thing I have to do in spring before I leave is I have to plant this flower. You need this flower to be planted um, in spring so that it grows through summer and through autumn. So there's the first sprout of the plant. I actually took damage from the bees. I'm gonna rewind again a little bit here. So what you can see here is I shot this uh, honey hive. A lot of these honey hives have these bees everywhere. And uh, if, you, oh, if you break this, then the bees will attack you. And it's really important for me because in this game, if you're in a cutscene, you're frozen in place. You have to watch the cutscene, like a lot of games. But if I take damage or get moved by something during the cutscene, so the bees aggro me, and while this cutscene's playing, I get hit by them. And as soon as that happens, I'm allowed to move. I can't see anything, but with practice, I know where I'm going. So that helps me to move to this section where I'm gonna clip through the floor um, faster, because I don't have to wait out that whole cutscene. It's pretty nice, uh, chunky time save. What's up, Stunsta? How you doing, buddy? That's so cool. I had no idea that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see it used again at the end of Click Clockwood, and it's uh, much more ridiculous. So now that we're in summer, uh, our first objective is to climb the tree to the beehive. Uh, so we're just going to go up the tree as fast as we can. Obviously, like, these are some pretty precise jumps and it's a difficult, difficult platformer. Like, uh, I'm jumping around these birds because you don't want to kill any birds. The first time you kill a bird, there's like a big cutscene that plays and loses you some time. Um, but I'm going to come in here and hopefully I stocked up enough uh, gold feathers to just make this little mini game very easy. I just stand there invulnerable while they all fly into me. I do also speedrun Banjo-Tooie. I'm actually going to be doing that on my stream moving forward. Now that I've gotten such a nice PB in Banjo-Kazooie, I'm going to take a break from Banjo-Kazooie and I'm going to be doing Banjo-Tooie 100% speedruns on my stream. The speedrun is about four and a half to five hours, so if you're interested in really long speedruns, you can check it out. My channel is twitch.tv slash duck. If you like Tui and you want to see what that's like, you can follow. So as you can see, the, the plant was there, it was planted, and I, uh, Gobi, he comes back from Gobi's Valley. He wants more abuse. I'm going to ground pound him again. Make him use his water on the plant. And yeah, hit the switch to open autumn. Tag's busy, I guess. I don't know. Tag's so it's important in summer that we let this beaver into his home. He's gonna hook us up a little bit later on in the later seasons. We're collecting worms to feed the bird that we hatched in spring. We got to feed him through uh, summer and autumn. Make sure he grows big and strong. I got this PB four days ago, August 7th. Good timing, because I was invited to the show before that with a much weaker PB. <laughs> I'm climbing the tree. Again, we do everything we can to avoid killing these birds. So I'm waiting for that bird, using the shock pad and getting out of the way as fast as I can. I actually made a mistake here, quickly recovered it. I'm super nervous at this point. Let's talk about how I feel in this moment. I'm losing it. You know, I'm trying as hard as I can to bring myself back. 
to a chill state, a focused state, a determined to do as, fa as best as I can on every little section. Like, I need to bring it back. And this summer was a little tiny bit sloppy because I just got that crazy click clock with early gold. Put me minute and 20 seconds ahead of my best ever time. So I'm trying to re rein it in right now. Thank you, company man. Appreciate the kind words. Really, it's really crazy to be able to do this for two and a half thousand people and just like, I don't know, not everybody gets to like share their accomplishments with so many people and get so many compliments and praise and stuff. It's really good. It's really bad for my ego, but it's good for everything else. How hype was I with that 40 second save? When I got that first Gobi's gold too. Oh, so hype. The big time saves is what you want. And my two worst splits from the previous PB were both gold. What that means is that uh, Gobi's Valley was the worst stage in my last PB, and Click Clockwood Early was my worst, uh, another one of my worst splits. And both of them, the very next PB, were the best I had ever done them. So cool. So there we go, I lost six seconds in summer. So I know you mentioned earlier that towards the end of the run, you got really nervous because you were on a great pace. Uh, when do those ner like, are you at this point feeling those nerves at all or is it still too early? I think when you get like a bit, like when you make it through Click Clock with Early successfully and the run is still alive and it's on a very good pace, that moment, the nerves mm -hmm. like hit you, right? But then I think mm -hmm. as you, like if I can calmly make my way through Quick Clockwood, which is a longer level, not particularly difficult. I need to sort of, I'm doing, like, you have time to come down and, like, get back to the task at hand. And I think so that the, the nerves don't stay with me from mm -hmm. now till the end of the run. They come back at certain points, but, like, I'm trying, I can, like, handle it a little bit better with all the time I have. But Clockwood is actually kind of nice for that. There's sections that really calm me down, you know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, because that's what I was thinking when you got that skip, that that right there could have been like a moment to kind of flag those nerves, but that makes a lot of sense that it it's not like a one moment thing and you stay nervous, but it kind of comes in waves depending on how the run's going. Yeah, exactly. Like I could have like a perfect Mumbo's Treasure Trove Cove and Clanker's Cavern and I'll get nervous. I'll be like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is a crazy start. I'm like 20 minutes into the run. But I mm -hmm. still could get ner I could get nervous then too. Yeah. So we're entering Naughty's house in autumn. He actually has a jiggy for us and two musical notes, but we leave the jiggy there because you can collect it in either autumn or winter, and it is actually faster to collect it in winter. And you'll see why. It's pretty obvious why. That was really funny when Lemon did hers. Were you there for that? Lemon did a pipe maze power hour. Thank you, Uncle Slim. Thanks, everybody. Stun stuff. Correct. Or eight. How do you deal with the nerves? Uh, yeah, we were just talking about it. It's, it's like I said, like some moment will make me really nervous. Like a good click clock would early. Now I'm like, oh, if this run dies, it's going to hurt so much. I'm so attached. But uh, what I try to do is I try to focus on each section at a time. Like right now I'm on autumn and I have to do autumn perfectly. I always have to do it like that, regardless if the run is good or bad, if I'm playing catch up or if I'm way ahead. This run right now, I'm way ahead. The last PB I got, I had to play perfect because I, I was way behind. I had to catch up. So I don't know. I think it's just the nerves hit you and then I try to put myself in, like, what's the immediate task that I have to do? And uh, play, calm myself down by playing the game. So here's a pretty cool part of the run. Spike Vegeta has made comments uh, on this part of the run that he pees his pants every time he sees this. So uh, there's a squirrel here. You have to collect six acorns for this squirrel. Uh, two of them are in his own house, so I don't know how he doesn't know where they are, but anyways, uh, there's the first one. But the next ones, they're all pretty exciting to watch. Uh, there's some good setups for these. So I jump all the way across a very precise jump. You have to rat a tat rap at the exact right time. I do a 
quasi blind jump into the very center and then land on that platform. And then this one, boom. <laughs> Jumping down a steep, steep slope and you have to land on the very edge to get that acorn. These acorns, by the way, have horrible hitboxes. Really bad. The, the very, very, very center of that is the only way you'll actually collect it. I hope I have a good winter. Like, so a pretty uh, intense part of the run, collecting those acorns. It's really fun. This is a juicer, magooser, mooser. That's like blind jumps like that anytime mm -hmm. and 3D platformers just make everything sink into my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it, the funny thing about that jump is that it actually has an extremely consistent setup. Like, I will never, ever miss that jump. So for me, mm -hmm. I'm just doing it. But everyone watching is like, ah! Yes, yeah. As a viewer, it's like, oh my gosh, how? It's like, yeah, it's much easier than certain other parts of the game that look easy. Mm-hmm. So we've shown you a couple of bit clips, Mad Monster Mansion early, Click Clockwood early. They're really crazy, precise with all the spinning around and Beak Bar just perfect, peck cancels, everything like that. Uh, there is a bit clip to get out of Autumn. It's much more simple. Uh, it's much, much more simple. You see it in a little bit here. First, I have to feed Eerie, the eagle. Ten worms we've collected throughout the stage. So I jump down here, there's a convenient Mumbo token on the way into Mumbo's skull. This is a relatively new change to the run. This is actually probably one of the newest changes, is the entirety of Autumn was rerouted so that you end in Mumbo's skull. Even though there's a worm here, and that would be useful for before, right? Because you want to feed that to the bird. Well, the way to leave Autumn now is that you do a precise set of inputs here, not nearly as hard as the other bit clips, but a beak barge, a punch, and then five Punch cancel. So every time I'm jumping here, I'm actually pressing B for exactly one frame, and I can clip through the floor. So it's another bit clip, but it doesn't have it as convoluted as a setup. And then I ground pound through it, it takes me back to the start of the stage. As we enter winter, this is what many people would say is the hardest part of Click Clock Wood. It is one of the harder parts of the game. Uh, as a top like speedrunner of this game, one of the things I practice all the time is winter. Like, I'll start up the stream, run through winter. Why not? Run through it real quick. It's only a few minutes long, and you need to be you need to be perfect at this part of the run. You need to be better than perfect because when you get here in an actual run, the nerves take away a bunch of how prepared you got. So you need to be hyper prepared for this stage. It's really tough. There's the click clock wood witch switch that spawns the jiggy. In the, in the overworld. You're, you probably, I don't know if anyone's wondering this yet, but if you noticed, good for you, I have barely collected any of the overworld jiggies. Not, like, hardly any of them. And there's a reason for that, you'll find out. That enemy can hit you and knock you out of the tree and kill you. Fun fact. Gotta hope that doesn't happen. So yeah, the kind of interesting thing about winter is you kind of beak bomb all the way to the top of the tree and make your way down at first, because um, there's a jiggy at the top of the tree. Fun fact, you can collect that jiggy at the very top of the tree in any season, and we just get it in winter because that's the fastest. So, a quick flight up to Erie here, uh, fully grown. Gonna give us a jiggy in a very polite way here. I have to be very careful to collect this without landing because I need to beak bomb to an even higher point in the tree where there is a jiggy sitting here. Fly into it to skip the dance. What I like to do here is uh, gold feather down to break this window. There's a couple ways to do it. My cat. At that exact moment of the, sh of the run, my cat jumped into my computer monitor at full speed. He was trying to jump over it and he missed and he smacked into my webcam and my monitor fell over. 
And yeah, that happened in the middle of the hardest part of the speed run. That was the best run of my life. Uh, so that was pretty nuts. <laughs> I actually lost time because of that. So shout outs to my cat, Jackie Chan, for losing me like four <laughs> seconds or something. Cats just know how to time things correctly, don't they? He never had ever done that before. He just <laughs> launched himself into my computer. <laughs> so yeah, very precise, tricky flying section. I might go back just to talk about it a little bit. Flying is a little tough. Okay, so this last flying section, there's a clip you can do. This clip's actually quite easy. So you fly into naughty, so you go out of bounds into the tree. Um, and when you're out of bounds, you can you can navigate your way into Naughty's house. He's the beaver. Now we're going to collect his jiggy, and with one A press, we can fly up into the honeycomb. And then with another kind of precise clip here, you beak bomb at the last possible moment, you can clip through the floor, which makes you void out, which always takes you back to the start of the level. So we finished winter, and it was a good winter, aside from the time I lost for my cat screwing me up. I did still save time there. And he fucking bashed right into it. My cat is a he him. Not, literally knocked over my All right, so then we get into spring two. Very interesting uh, trick coming up here. I mentioned earlier how if a cutscene is playing in most games and in this game, you are frozen in place while the cutscene plays. You you watch what happens. But in this game, if you take damage during a cutscene, you can move. I'm actually going to be playing a cutscene that's not meant to be played. The way that you're supposed to get the flower jiggy is you're supposed to water this flower one last time in autumn. Gobi is standing right here and you ground pound Gobi and he waters the flower and then the, the flower sprouts like this and the jiggy appears right here. But we didn't do that in autumn. There's an interesting glitch you can do. If you put the eggs into the plant in spring again, as if you're planting the flower for the first time, it will grow as if you watered it in autumn but the game gets completely confused, it has no idea what's happening, and it fully soft locks. The game soft locks, nothing, nothing happens, the screen is frozen in one place, and you cannot move, and you can't do anything, you can't even pause. So what's gonna happen here is, the way around that is I'm gonna intentionally, for all intents and purposes, soft lock the game by doing this glitch where you are not supposed to plant the flower again in spring. But I jump into the aggro range of the bees, so they're going to come at me while I'm stood here frozen. And they're going to hit me. Now that I've taken damage, I can navigate. The entire rest of this sequence, I'm just going to let it play out, is me using audio cues to navigate into Mumbo's skull while the screen is completely frozen on nothing. So here we go. There we go. I made it in. Jackie, please. So by navigating your way to Mumbo Skull and entering, you negate the soft lock. You can continue to play the game. And the Jiggy actually spawns in spring when it's supposed to spawn in autumn. So I can collect it with the B, which is much faster. It saves about 20 seconds. So the rest of this stage is simply doing stuff you got to do with the B. I'm going to fly all the way up here to get this Jinjo. And then I'm going to fly into the Jiggy that I just spawned on the flower. The one you're meant to get in autumn. And then uh, you enter the beehive to get the final Jiggy. You can only enter here as the bee. The final Jinjo gives you the last Jiggy. And you leave Click Clockwood with 100%. With a little clip out of bounds to get back to the exit. Not bad. So now this is where things get real interesting. I'm still the bee, and what's happened in the other stages, if you remember when I left as the walrus, I transformed back into Banjo-Kazooie. When I left as the crocodile, I transformed back into Banjo-Kazooie. Mumbo will not let you take a transformation out of the stage that it's supposed to be in. So the bee is obviously supposed to be allowed out here. It's the only way to collect this jiggy here. But then, with a little glitch, a little clip right here, I'm going to be going out of bounds, and I travel around the trigger. Mumbo will trigger the D transformation somewhere around here, but since I'm flying up, he can trigger it up here too. 
but I'm going to fly around it, and I'm going to go straight into this loading zone. So Mumbo cannot detransform me, because he'll do it right around here. And I can take the B wherever I want. Good enough. So he's loose. So the B is very fun and interesting here because he is going to travel all around the lair and fly places you're not supposed to fly and clip through things you're not supposed to clip through. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the B over to Freeze Easy Peak. Remember how I said we have to go to Freeze Easy Peak twice? Well, the entire second visit is as the bee. So I just fly into this wall. The witch switch actually opens this like an advent calendar. If I just fly into the wall as the bee, I pick up the jiggy. I don't need to open that door. I just get the jiggy. And then I fly all the way down and I enter Freeze Easy Peak for the second visit, which as I said, the second visit is 100% done as the bee from Click Clockwood. So first things first, I left a few things on my first visit. One of them was the Jiggy in this pipe. And I just clipped through it. And all the Jinjos I left as well. So I'm flying around. I got the blue Jinjo, I got the pink Jinjo. Um, and now I'm gonna go straight into Mumbo's skull. I'm not gonna transform into the Walrus. I'm not gonna transform into Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, yeah, the only it. reason I'm going in there is because there's a Jinjo. That's nerve wracking. Let's hope I don't lose. So earlier when I asked if this was a preference, this makes a lot more sense why <laughs> yeah. it's not. <laughs> no, second FP visit is fully with the B and he's very quick because he can fly everywhere. One of the things that's incredibly, uh, I, I wanna say incredibly difficult, but it's one of those things that's very difficult to learn, but when you have it down, it's just so nerve wracking. I have to do the second boggy race as the B. This is the one you're supposed to do as Banjo-Kazooie with the speed shoes. You can do it as the B, but the problem is that Boggy is at full speed the entire time. His rubber banding is broken. I cannot miss a single one of these gates or I will lose the race. Losing this race loses a huge amount of time. So throughout this part of the speed run, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was completely holding my breath. I, I just like was so... <laughs> worried I was going to lose. If you lose, it's so awkward to navigate the B through these gates. You have to have a perfect race as the B. And once I get to this point, I kind of realize like I made it. But I, yeah, I fully held my breath because what is there such an intense part of the run? But we did it. We beat Boggy as the B. And you guys were so uh, in a trance. You didn't even spam what hey. Tsk, tsk. Scary. It's terrifying. It's terrifying doing that race as the bee. But anyways, we collected all the Jinjos as well as a few Jiggies we left behind, which such as the Boggy race. And now we can do a little bit of out of bounds flying. Not supposed to be able to fly in this room, so it doesn't even have a ceiling. Uh, you get the last honeycomb and then fly up out of bounds. Void out. Back to the start of the level. We're finished with Freeze Easy Peak Two. Like I said, I hadn't been collecting uh, the overworld jiggies at all. There's one in this eye. You can clip into it like that. I just picked up the jiggy, even though it's behind glass. Get that whole thing. Someone asked in the chat earlier why I skipped the witch switch in Gobi's Valley. Well, this is why. Take the bee, fly right into it. Boom, I got the jiggy. You don't have to open that thing. You just get it with the bee. Bubble Gloop Swamp, we didn't hit the switch there either. This Jiggy's behind bars. Thankfully, the bee can fit between those bars. So we do a mad dash for all the overworld Jiggies right before we go take out the final boss. Thanks for answering those questions, Dingo and Arix. So... I now collect the Rusty Bucket Bay Lair Jiggy, which is sitting right here. And then I fly into the next area, which is the Furnace Fun minigame. I now officially 100% of the game. I have every Jiggy, Note, and Honeycomb in the game. And all that's left is to beat the final boss. And then the speed run will be done. But 
But as you noticed, when I flew back into this area, Click Clockwood, Mumbo de-transformed me because I flew on purpose into his trigger so I could turn back into Banjo-Kazooie for the, for the quiz. Wow, nice. And you're going to learn a lot about the Furnace Fun Quiz. So this is a part of the run where usually, before you can make it to the final boss, Grunty here, the witch, is going to quiz you on different things. This is general knowledge. This is like a picture kind of question. This is an audio question. This is a joker space. It could be anything, but it lets you skip other questions. This is a time space where you have to do a mini game. There's a whole lot going on. So I answer a few questions here. It is kind of boring, so, you know, I might want to skip it. <laughs> so that's a picture question. Uh, Bubble Gloop Swamp is where I have been. Kobe's Valley, we ride a magic carpet. I skip the audio questions because normally I have the answers memorized. Like, basically, it'll say the question and play a little audio clip and you have to pick the answer. But the answers are always the same. So I have the two wrong answers and the correct answer memorized. But I actually forgot this one and I guessed and I got it right. So that was kind of lucky. Lucky moment. The Joker space. So this can be any question. Uh, some of the questions you can get on Grunty's Furnace Fun are questions about Grunty. And there's you're supposed to learn them as you go. And they're different every time you play the game. So you're supposed to like write them down. Like the de the developers, Rare, wanted you to write down everything about Grunty, and it changes every time you play the game. So if I get one of those questions, I don't know the answer, and I have to guess. Luckily, I didn't. I got a general knowledge question here, which is really easy. And the icing on the cake is, I'm about to perform a trick called Furnace Fun Skip. So what's interesting about Furnace Fun is between these lines, between the tiles right here, as you can see, I'm drawing like lines that connect all the different tiles. There is a thin line of pixels along this line where you can actually use abilities. Normally you can't, you can just walk on this board and answer questions. But if I get onto one pixel here, I can actually get into Talent Trot. And if I get into Talent Trot and slide a little bit further over, I can actually answer this question in Talent Trot, which can break the entire game because this is a death square. If I answer this wrong, you just get thrown into the fire and die. Um, but that does not happen if you answer it incorrectly in Talent Trot. There's a catch though. So I, I mess it up here, but I get it on the second try. If this question she is about to read, if it says, see the picture on my screen, do you know where you have been? The run dies. If this question is a picture question, you cannot do the trick and the run would die. But I got a general knowledge question again. Super lucky furnace fun, super fast furnace fun. But just so you know, the day before I got this run, which was August 6th, I got this run on August 7th. I got to the end of the game and I got a picture question on that tile. Thank you, thank you. And I, the run died. One yesterday, but you cannot have one today. And I was really upset. The very next day though, we got a much better run to the end and they gave it to me. So here we go, this is it, final boss. I'm gonna open, uh, open up, I have 33 jiggies left, which is absurd, you're supposed to have six. <clears throat> but I skipped opening a bunch of levels, as you know, so I kept a lot of my jiggies. There's pure RNG run killer two hours in, I am telling you that obviously, nerd, that is exactly what I'm saying. Pure RNG. There's like a 20% chance too, it's pretty high. All right, so final boss time. I'll say a little bit, uh, thanks for watching. If you're interested in Banjo speedrunning, uh, there's a Discord. Uh, there's speedrun.com slash banjo, which has a bunch of resources on every Banjo series game, not just Kazooie, Tui, Pilot, Nuts and Bolts, Grunty's Revenge, all the Banjo games. Uh, I stream Banjo all the time. If you want, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash duck. I'm going to be doing a lot of Banjo Tooie coming up. So if you liked Kazooie, maybe you could check out my stream, see if you like Tooie. And uh, yeah, let's just let it play. I had a pretty good fight, I think, but I did uh, make a little mistake. So Grunty Boss has several phases. The first phase 
is that you have to just hit her a bunch of times with eggs, and there's an exploit there where she runs into six eggs and the phase is over. This next phase, she's outside of the castle, and you have to long range hit her with three eggs on each side. So you have to do this four times. <clears throat> uh, so there we go, trying to hit her. I lose a little bit of time here because unfortunately not all these eggs hit her, even though oh, actually like one of my initial three eggs hit her. That is super unlucky and weird. But anyways, done that phase. The next phase is probably arguably the hardest, which is the beak bomb phase. You have to hit her with a beak bomb and she's flying around like crazy. She's stopping, she's starting. So unless you really know what you're doing, this can be a very difficult part of the run. You have to lead your second shot, but she stays still for long enough during the third and fourth that I can just shoot directly at her. And that phase is done. And I just go, I just beat bomb into the ground to get to the ground quickly. There is a, a nice little cutscene skip coming up here where I have to line up the camera perfectly here. I know I have to avoid two fireballs, so there's the first one. As soon as I avoid the second fireball, I stand in a really precise spot on the ground and start pooping eggs. While this Jinjo statue is rising, I actually put the three eggs in. So that Jinjo is attacking during this cutscene. That saves a whole 10 seconds. It's really nice to get that right at the end of the run. So now I try to, I get a little cocky here. I try to MLG quick snipe all these. And the last one, I really thought this would work. I lined it up so quick, but I was just a little too far away. So I lost some time. It's, it's fine. I recovered and got the next three shots in. But that actually did cost me third place. For all you people wondering where I am on the leaderboard, I'm fourth. I would have gotten third if I hit those uh, egg shots. So, choked the third place to that one. And we're about to be done. This is the very last part of the run. The final phase of Grunty is the Ginginator. For saving all the Jinjos, they give you a little help here. Mega long victory lap slot, I'll take it. All right, so to avoid the fireballs optimally, there's a little uh, pattern we do to, to do all these eggs quickly. Uh, I did pretty good on the Ginginator here and time is in, well, it's right exactly right now, time. And we ended up with a personal best of 2.01.18, which was a minute and 11 seconds faster than my previous best run, all because of a couple of really big golds and uh, keeping my cool. So GG's, hope you enjoyed chat. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And this was a fantastic show. Again, chat, I know we've been plugging it all stream, but please, please, please go follow Duck if you've enjoyed this show at twitch.tv slash duck. Uh, Duck, I'll let you go ahead and sh give your shout outs as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just that I, you know, I've always been speedrunning Banjo and I'm always trying to get better and doing lots of speedruns and Tui's the next thing on the list. So if you want to check out my stream and follow and you'll see when I'm live and you'll probably see me doing a Tui run. I was thinking about doing one tonight, but it's a five hour speedrun. It's getting a little late. So maybe I'll see you tomorrow if you do follow. Thanks very much. You too. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, just, just I, if you're interested in banjo speedrunning, then check out uh, speedrun.com slash banjo, and you can ask me any questions you want on my stream. If you want to get into this, there you go. Yeah, and I was I was uh, joking in chat that can't wait to have you on, hopefully for Banjo Tui in the future on this show. Um. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. If That'd you, if you awesome. have yeah. an extra six hours, uh, five hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But this has been an awesome, awesome show. Uh, chat, yeah, go, please go follow oh, Doug. Oh, yeah. I guess I could also <laughs> shout out my Twitter, right? Yeah. I think that's it. There uh, you go. Follow me on Twitter also. I post a lot of fun stuff there. I, your link will not post on there because you're not modded, but I will go ahead and I Yay. can link that for you. Mod <laughs> you me. Going, no, I'm kidding. Uh, Twitch <laughs> Twitch duck. Um. <laughs> yeah, twitter.com slash yeah. twitch duck. I have a discord too. Uh, Discord.gg slash dixcord. That's, uh, that's what it is. All right. Yeah, that's yes. all. I all just right, hope everybody chat. had fun. Yes. 
Yes, this was a fantastic time. Uh, chat, that is it for GDQ Hot Fix for tonight, but make sure to tune in tomorrow. We'll have Challenger approaching, followed by Legally Cute, all starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. And make sure to stick around. We'll be dropping a raid somewhere, someone doing some speed running content. Uh, so make sure to stick around for the raid. Everyone have a great night. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.